शोर है मोबाइल दे देना बेटा ये इयरफोन देना टू ऑल दी पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड और एमिनेंट स्पीकर डॉक्टर किशोर शेंडे सर इन दिस सेकेंड डे ऑफ द वर्कशॉप दैट इज वर्कशॉप ऑन मोलिकुलर डॉकिंग एंड द ड्रग डिजाइनिंग सो फ्रॉम दिस मॉर्निंग सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर दिस सेशन विद डॉक्टर किशोर शेंडे सर वो इज कन्वेनर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्कशॉप एंड डॉक्टर किशोर शेंडे सर इज वर्किंग एज एन इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफिसर एट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो टेक्नोलॉजी एंड बायो इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स बरकतुल्ला यूनिवर्सिटी Dr. Kishore Shinde is currently uh, provides services to entire biotechnology and bioinformatics fraternity in the area of bioinformatics and computational biology at various capacity. Dr. Kishore Shinde has authored and co-authored many research papers uh, and presented works at many national and international conferences. Dr. Shinde contribution have acclaimed recognition from honorable subjects experts around the world and Dr. Kishore Shinde is Actively associated with different societies and academies. So, Dr. Kishore Shinde's uh, academic career is decorated with several reputed awards and funding. So, now I would like to invite our speaker of the eminence, uh, Dr. Kishore Shinde sir, to to start our this uh, today's session. And thank you, sir. We heartily welcome you in this thank morning you. session. Thank you, sir. Can you hear my uh, voice? Sir, voice is not coming. Hello, let me check. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Can you hear my voice? No, it's not coming, sir. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so please, earphone. Ah, uh, ek baar nikal de, then hello? again. Hello. Am I audible? Kamlesh sir, his voice is coming very clearly. Am I audible? Huh? Am I audible? Hello? No sir, not it. Your Hello? voice is not coming, sir. Am I audible? Sir, please re-log in. I think uh, there must be a problem related with login. No, no sir. we have dr nilanjan with us and he has joined us very good morning dr nilanjan sir we are starting the session with dr nilanjan uh, sir right now and after okay, that uh, we will uh, continue with your training session sir okay sir sure Hello. Am I audible? No, sir. No voice is coming. Uh, yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Sir, uh, please remove your earphone. Hello. Hello. Oh, I can hear you. That from Jack. From Jack, uh, please remove this earphone. <laughs> आवाज नहीं आ रही सर आपकी मैं आपको सुन पा रहा हूँ सर लेकिन आई थिंक आज डॉक्टर आरपीत इंजीनियर श्रीवास्तव सर एम आई ऑडिबल ही इज सेइंग दैट आई एम ऑडिबल सो सर योर वॉइस इज वेरी क्लियर सर ओके ओके कैन यू हियर माय वॉइस श्रीवास्तव सर यस सर योर वॉइस इज क्लियर सर ओके ओके या
think you are able to hear search voice. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, so, continue. Sir, up, uh, start with me. Arpit? Hello, Arpit? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, your voice is coming. Uh, Dr. Kishor Shinde, sir, you can proceed with your presentation. No, sir, your voice is coming. Arpit? Right now, I'm not getting his voice. Uh, I was getting, but... Sir, getting his voice. Arpit, sir, ki awaj aapko aari thi? You are able to hear him? Nahi, sir, ab nahi aari hai. Us time aari thi? Yes, sir. Mere system mein nahi aari thi, sir. Uh, I think, sir, ko bole ki reconnect ho jaya, fir se. Dr. Kishor Shinde, sir, uh, kindly reconnect yourself because your voice is not audible right now. Sometimes the problems are occurring like anything. So initially his voice was uh, highly clear, uh, but uh, later on his voice was not clear. Actually, no, yes, so nine is very clear. That's why I'm asking to. My voice was going when I was uh, deliberating.
Hello. Yes, sir. Now you are audible. Okay, actually it was a network problem, internet connection. So I was far away from modem, so that's what I tracked out. I tracked out, changed the position. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sharing my. Sorry for the inconvenience. Oh no problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, I need. Uh, it's asking. I have tried to. Uh, Present actually, this presentation is there, na? Sharing option. Yeah. Sharing option, the fourth icon on right side, from above. Just click on it. It will ask for uh, installing the uh, BlueJeans extension. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, just install it. Then again, uh, yeah, select that entire screen option. Okay. Yes. screen sharing Yes, sir. It is here. Can you see the screen? Okay, so you can see. Yeah. It. But I can't see myself. Right. Okay. It's good morning. Uh, your slide is not present now. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. Thirteen MB. Okay. Okay. That's why it will take a time. So maybe just other. Right. So that's what. Okay, sir. Uh, you is start it? your present. Okay. So, uh, good morning, uh, all of you. Thank you, Doctor uh, Professor Chore, uh, and all the faculty members, the audience there. So, actually, it's a, a great pleasure to present myself. Actually, I'm I'm working in the different field. Uh, it's a, uh, whether genomic, computational biology, different data. Mainly, I'm working at the Bioinformatics Center. And uh, the data that is coming to me, it's mainly I'm focusing on that. My working area is the microbial genomics and uh, the SNP detection or protein uh, in silico mutation and mutational analysis. That is the work I'm and uh, mainly work with the bacterial genome also or fungal genome, human genome or human genes and even the environmental data. So that's a part depends on what are the facilities that need to be provided by the uh, center. But uh, uh, this is also one topic that I'm working this molecular modeling. I'm teach actually this topic I'm teaching to the students, and but working on also the some genomes that is viral genome also, but in microbial genomics or the viral genomics. So that's I'm taking this part of codon usage analysis or codon usage pattern that's uh, vary in the different uh, bacteria or organisms, and uh, that's and it it is related to the uh, relate that thing to the protein. Uh, that part. So I just going for like key topics of molecular modeling. It was a very nice lecture I heard, and you also gone through the Dr. Uh, Parth Sarthi and uh, Dr. Nilanjan. So they have uh, presented. So it was very nice lecture that hearing, and uh, I, I thought some topics should be focused while going for molecular modeling. Whether it's uh, when you are working with the molecules or uh, modeling. So that's part, and uh, I just want to focus some of this uh, that what strategies that are used against the SARS-CoV-2 pandemics and uh, what should be focused basic parts or what are the areas or which are the molecules that be that can be traced because we are working on a in silico so what it means the in silico uh, when in in silico that is in vivo in vitro so uh, like that the in silico words come and counted and that come into existence in public in 1989 in the workshop that is cellular automata theory and applications in Las Almas National uh, Las Almas New Mexico. So that's because the computer chips they are com, uh, const, uh, they are composed of the silicon mainly. So that's why it's a word in silico. So actually, it's not. It will not give the. It is the hypothesis hypothesization of uh, hypothesis presentation. So uh, whatever we are just uh, presenting, it's not a solution to that particular problem, but it's a hypothesis so that the wet lab or in vivo and in vitro can move to the towards uh, 
uh, towards that direction to uh, produce the product or uh, a final solution to that problem. So that's what in silico words point and uh, uh, it's now used and I know that in silico words need only a computer. So what the facility or computational systems that is required. So okay, desktop, it's okay, 12 GB RAM is enough. Uh, that's minimum. Now, what is the need? If you are going for a data mining, biological data mining, or whether if even if you are trying for this one, molecular modeling or drug designing, that's what to carry out that uh, uh, that type of practical type of practices. You need the desktop very sound, so that is minimum 12 GB RAM, 1 DB terabyte hard disk, or 12 GB data transfer speed should be there. So that's a requirement. Whether uh, because we know that the speed we are having, just we are getting a 1 Mbps. Uh, that is the speed maximum uh, at uh, optic fiber also and uh, that's what and even the PCs we are next of that just the 4 GB RAM maximum we are now uh, as I'm working on a microbial genomes also so I need I have 16 GB of RAM and that is also not enough for carrying out the um, uh, microbial genome assembly annotation and analysis hello yes hello you hear me Hello. Actually, uh, sir, slide is not, slide is not slide. visible. Hello. Okay, just I will uh, stop sharing that one. I will share the PD, PDF file then. Okay, it is lighter, so it will be easily. Yes. Okay. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's lighter, so it will be easily visible to everybody. Sir, please, please zoom in. Just uh, is it? Uh, okay. Little bit zoom in. Okay, so I've just. Yeah. Okay. Can uh, you yes, see sir. it now? Yeah. Just taking it one minute. So, uh, so that's what I was talking about. The what is the computational system that is required for uh, molecular modeling, even or genome assembly? So today's computer that's uh, minimum eight GB RAM. Now tenth generation computers are there uh, with the nine five zero zero series of Intel. I whether i three, i five, or i seven is there. But if you're working for a molecular modeling, then you should have a Xeon processor that's MERS or a workstation. So it's uh, required. And one terabyte of hard disk because the intermediate data generation is very high. And that's what. If you have the GPU, that is a graphical processing unit, uh, a parallel processing processes, others like NVIDIA is there. So that will also enhance the speedy calculations or it will enhance the speedy calculation. It depends on because if uh, processor speed is very less, and number of processes are later, so that will also reduce, uh, that will increase the time of uh, calculation and computation. That sort, uh, if you are working on a protein simulation or protein that part, so you need the supercomputer. So that's what I asked uh, yesterday also. Okay, okay. Dr. Pass RT, because uh, Delhi uh, IIT Delhi, so chemistry department, Professor Jainram, he was providing the facility, the IIT Delhi, the super computing system uh, for a computational and computer computational systems uh, we need a uh, means for molecular modeling or genome assembly metabolic pathway engineering or even the data mining so if the data mining in that case also if you have a graphics uh, uh, more images are there that is heavy data either so that's uh, need a, a large amount of memory temporary memory secondary uh, primary memory mainly so and uh, also the secondary memory so if you're working on a small genome it will work but for metabolic pathway analysis again you really need uh, uh, amount of energy. So uh, while working on a uh, molecular modeling or uh, drug designing, that's what you should have a desktop or computers. Uh, minimum uh, I tenth or ninth minimum should have a RAM like uh, 15, 16 GB, and uh, processor should be updated because all softwares are very complicated. They are going for uh, very advanced algorithms are there that needs exhaustive cal calculation. So even the laptop portability is there. And you can have the portability is the one, but cost will also increase. That's one. But we have a laptop available with the 16 GB of RAM now, so that's also enough. So you can work with this software. 
then node notebook is there so it's okay but super super computing systems uh, it's okay we have a uh, pune university iit delhi or some of the icer or even some thai isc bangalore so they are having but uh, whether you have access or not it, uh, the iit delhi was providing the access but now uh, it's uh, uh, always that request is in queue if you are going to the iit delhi then they will surely provide it but their facility as i said see the pro professor parth or they also said okay, okay future they may provide this because while going for a uh, huge and extensive calculations and uh, the simulation type uh, simulations so you can you need a tremendous computational power of a computer so another is like cloud computing is also that facility you should have a, you should be aware with this technology to carry out such molecular modeling or um, computational analysis or simulations or anything even i i do works like uh, sir as uh, study dr nilanjan said it's a zdoc uh, that one docking software besides that there are another docking softwares are there online that is the swiss doc that is by swiss institute of bioinformatics so they are providing the swiss doc one software where you have a facility of swiss model uh, that is swiss product modeling protein modeling systems it's pro that provide then pyre to analysis server is also there that uh, but they are not providing then another tester is also there uh you have a hat doc is there patch doc is there so these are docking systems uh three swiss doc patch doc hat doc or uh, you have a uh, sd versus the z doc protein protein so they have uh they need extra so these are very uh high end computational systems you can but they are also lacking some problems in that uh computation so we will come to that while uh part but uh, mainly they are uh, we you can't uh provide the binding sites for there so they are just easy they will try to find the probable binding sites and uh, try to dock <clears throat> then uh, what the information uh, informatics and software so uh, you need uh, okay from dos to windows are there from unix to linux pre operating system is there so ek minute hello ha pushpanjali mai thoda lecture mein can i talk to you later so uh, uh while operating system but but if you are a getter uh, better friendly with uh, uh this one uh, uh linux it will be better unix and linux when you are running with uh, uh, command line command line uh, command line operating system so it will be better yeah, that will perform that will free up some of the main uh, memory uh, due to the, that is occupied by the graphics of it so that's what then relational database system or graphics designing algorithms are there more uh, than we have a c c plus so some uh, scripting should be known to you like some of the software so they can so easily you can handle the uh, for like file Hello. conversion you can do hello yeah main aata hu ekdam fast file conversion can do like c c plus or some basic knowledge should be there some software that accept the script over there like calculation some bond angle if you want to convert the file like gromax files are there so many softwares they won't visualize like common pdb format is one so one format to other format or you can extract just the information of the that uh, xyz coordinate system from that particular uh, calculations so you need so that's why some uh, scripting language you should be aware with either whether it's a c c++ or perl so you can use that one then more computation like r language is also there <clears throat> sps starts for calculations or statistical analysis now that's what i'm going chemo informatics or computational chemistry you can i uh, you can find the words that was the, uh, defined by fk brown in 1998 use of computer and informational techniques apply to range of problems in the field of chemistry so uh chemistry is the field mainly based on the calculations nobody has seen the atom but it was hypothesized based on the spectroscopic data so we call the bohr bohr's atom atomic theory and based on all that calculations so we have quantum mechanics and the classical mechanics so quantum mechanics mainly explains the structure and uh, that's what we are saying so okay light has a wave nature as well as the particulate nature and uh, based on the spectroscopic data the atom structure atomic structures for design is atom is comprised of the atom nucleus that is the protons and the neutrons and then electrons are evolving so that is the basics we are not going below the atomic level but we are studying the atomic atomic interactions and uh, the each individual atom has its own property of bonding that we call valency or it has a it's a uh, uh, means each uh, individual atom has its own uh, electro uh, physical chemical properties over there and based on that uh, physical chemical properties the 
uh, these all techniques are uh, our molecular modelings and uh, all simulations. So that all techniques are there. The base is the mathematics and statistics over here. But these, uh, if uh, everybody should be aware with this, uh, some of the basic that is uh, physics and chemistry or computational chemistry. That's the parts you can uh, uh, that will be required. So what are the objectives of these chemoinformatics or computational chemistry? So like creation of the database, chemical structure, literature, data bank, reaction, pub game, pub assays, we have know that developing structure, storage format, molecular structure, drawing software tools, molecular visualization techniques and tool, virtual screen of molecules, and then study molecular interactions, docking, uh, interest, study, then uh, study the molecular physical chemical properties. So these are the objectives. That uh, that can be. so there are so many uh, chemistry databases are used or they are developed. Uh, number of them are so like here I have just highlighted 24 like Chemexon databases, Zinc databases, and as even toxicological databases are there. Or K ligand is there, Brenda is there, enzymes database and enzyme catalysis mechanism. K mime is there, web reactions. Then spectra online is there. So you have a spectral databases. You have spectrum. So you can if you have a spectra, whether iron spectra or NM, NMR spectra, so it will calculate probable chemicals or compounds or uh, compounds that are present in the specific uh, extracts. Like many of these plant extracts we are going for, and, uh, and that can be analyzed uh, by various spectroscopic techniques, and uh, that data can be put on. So these are that uh, that data can be uh, provided to uh, the, these uh, analysis tools, which are online available. So such uh, tools, uh, such databases also as analysis tool.
here is just a technical error we will join this one your client which is this question i call be with us and means will be back with you
हेलो आज हाँ एनी प्रॉब्लम हाँ हाँ ओके ओके आई थिंक आई डोंट नो इट्स No audible. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. I don't know my microphone goes off and even the camera. Anyway, uh, my slides are visible. Uh, not yet, sir. <clears throat> But wait. Is it visible now? Ah uh, yes, sir. Is it? It's visible yes, now. Yes, sir. You can uh, move. On. Okay. <coughs> so, how these molecules are formed? uh the molecules are stored that is uh, mainly the uh, this one uh, cartesian coordinate system that's one but uh, if you are away like our coordinate system so the obviously it will help you to see what are the changes and so always when the whenever there are the molecular bumps are there so not interacting that time it's uh, very easy uh, to analyze and uh, manually tackle the problem so that so this is just a molecule that is stored Uh, uh internal core coordinate system so molecule is that how the data is presented this one is uh, i'm just showing here so you'll find atom 1 atom 2 atom 3 so we have a molecule here acetylene uh is the molecule we have a core atom 1 1 over there 2 over there 3 and then atom 4 and 5 so atom i'm starting with so this is the atom that is all considered 0 0 0 so here this first uh, column this uh, atom uh element name is there second column that's one present the uh, bond length uh, and then bond angle second third column fourth column is the bond uh, torsional angle and then connectivity means whether uh, the atom one connected to previous one atom then that one atom to connected to next uh, previous and the next previous like three atoms are there so how they are connected so atom 2 is connected to atom 1 so what is the bond length it's given like 1.51 then again as only two atoms are considered so this is the atom here okay so these two are considered so only the bond length is there bond length angle is not there if one angle one uh, element is connected over here this direction or any other direction so that could be the bond angle but atom 1 there is no connection previous to that one for that so 0 0 is the first column it has only a zero then atom 2 is connected to atom 1 and the bond length is 1.51 angstrom unit so this is what uh, atom 1 then we have a uh, this one is we have a atom 2 uh, is connected to atom 1 but atom 1 is not connected with any other atom that's why the bond angle torsional angle is not there now this will tell you the connectivity here so here this will tell you the connectivity and this connectivity that is atom 2 is connected to atom 1 but uh, atom 1 is not connected to any other atom so 0 0 now come to the atom 3 so this is the atom here so atom 3 is connected to atom 2 atom 2 is connected to atom 1 so this is the connection how is that 
so atom 2 and 3 the bond length is uh, 1.50 so that's one is the bond here so atom 3 is connected to atom 2 and atom 2 is connected to atom 1 so atom 3 is uh, connected to 2 by a bond length that is 1.50 and the bond angle that is formed so this is the bond angle here that is that forming the atom 1 atom 2 and atom 3 so it has a 1.27 that is the angle uh, bond angle that is alpha 2 uh, uh, that is alpha 3 2 1 that's the bond angle and here torsional angle of the uh, tor for torsional angle you need a minimum four atoms so third torsional angle is not there then but we have like uh, atom 2 3 is connected to atom 1 and atom uh, 2 is connected to atom 1 atom 2 is connected to atom 1 and 1 don't have any connections previous stream or first direction then we have atom 4 here this one is here okay so this one atom 4 is there so atom 4 is there so uh, this one is the atom 4 here so in atom 4 is connected to again atom 3 here so 1.34 so this is the distance between the atom 4 and 3 so this is the distance between atom 5 and 3 so here this distance is like 1.41 then so bond angle is given that is bond angle between the atom 4 atom 3 and atom 2 so this one is the angle over here and then uh, we have a torsional angle here now torsional angle this angle that one means atom 1 atom we have atom 1 atom 2 atom 3 and atom 4 so these four at the four atoms that form a torsional angle and it's a rotation like that one so this is the plane that is rotating so it will just like so that tells you the torsional angle and then connectivity is given so atom 4 is connected to atom 3 atom 3 is connected to atom 1 2 and atom 2 is connected to atom 1 so what about the atom 5 but atom 5 is connected not with the 4 but it is with the 3 and here same thing that we have a bond length we have a bond angle but bond angle this one this type means atom 5 atom 3 and 2 so its connection is given like atom 5 is connected to not with the 4 but it is connected with the 3 so this connection will tell you how this interaction because there is no bond as such the interaction the molecular orbitals are they are overlapping and as uh, that the atoms become stationary based on whether it's um, uh, uh, the forces uh, means uh, that's one uh, that forces uh, that is uh, repulsive and that active forces are in equilibrium that points is the stationary so we call this overlapping of as per the atom uh, molecular uh, that's the nature of chemical bonding or uh, uh, digestion hypothesis uh, so where the atomic uh, molecules uh, they uh, the war uh, the overlapping that's the strength the extent of overlapping that uh, that defines the uh, uh, strength of a bond and the strength of the another uh, um, theory that is the molecular orbital theory that explains the energy of uh, this molecule whether it's anti-bonding bonding all that so here this connectivity accordingly and uh, that's means this is the how molecule this is the internal coordinate system i will come to the cartesian coordinate system when it was this is not used much one but now only the cartesian coordinate system is now what are the chemical file formats so you'll find that the bot dot mol and dot dat these are pdb so three like three latest extensions are there then uh, actually these all files are the text files simple ascii code uh, files without any control characters over there so they are simple text files you can open that files in notepad or even a word pad and you can uh, see what are the so there are different uh, uh, formats so Software may recognize either of the format like Swiss uh, SPDB software can recognize the PDB previously, but now it can also recognize the MOL format. There is another MDL format is also there, XML, XYZ format is there, CML format here. So that one. So even Argus Lab or Maximum software they recognize the MOL, dot MOL format and the PDB. PDB that is for the protein molecule format and dot MOL or MDL format, these are small molecules. SDF is the format for of the this one uh, ncbi pubchem uh, compound that uh, that database is using sda format but sda and mol2 format they are similar type so this one is uh, uh, that is important wow now here is the mdl format here h2o2 is the molecule given h2 means two hydrogen and two oxygen atoms are there the extension is small so more format is small so four molecules three connections are there three this one is the four atoms are there four elements are there and uh, three connections that is three bonds are there zero with this remit this is the x coordinate here this is the y coordinate here and this is the z coordinate here so the element is the o so position of the o is given x y z then position of oxygen second oxygen is given hydrogen is given some all 
PDB format never show you the hydrogen. The hydrogens are uh, the hydrogen positions are approximated. Uh, they are not shown in the PDB file. Otherwise, PDB file will be larger. So that's the um, uh, difference uh, between other formats. Whereas the MDL mol formats, the so small molecular formats, they shows the hydrogen uh, elements for that. So this is the M end and it's a connectivity one to two, one to three, and two to four. So these are the connection connectivities is given and even the bonds are also given <laughs> now another issue with this format this format you'll find the decimals that is a uh, four decimal uh, four decimal places are used in the coordinate whereas in case of the pdb you will find three decimal and that's also a difference with uh, between the calculation while calculating because the energy and the uh, distance they are very uh, much closely related so this coordinate system it's always obviously three it's a fraction of 1000 so that is a, uh, that point one to zero range point zero 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 point zero 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 one so that's a range and here in this case of mdl whereas in case of uh, pdb it's a point zero zero one so that point zero zero one zero difference is much uh, uh, that's also uh, that's also affect this calculation solve so that's the optimization techniques or simulations are important so formats and their positions i think uh, why sum up? This is the one of the problem. The coordinate system that is used, uh, the decimal places for the this particular molecule. So these are actually approximated to uh, round up to uh, uh, particular specific like three. It may be uh, something like it's maybe uh, 0.9012.9. So it has converted to three at quote. But even in PDB. If it if it could be the NPDB format, it will convert as a 901 only. Okay, because three that will be considered as a zero. But this will be converted when a nine is there, so it will be converted to as a five zero. So that's a difference, a small point zero zero one difference. Uh, that uh, doesn't matter, but for a whole molecule calculation, it will obviously a matter. So this is a PDB format. We have a header here, titles, then compounds, sources, keyword, authors then uh, repository data journals for that uh, then remark and remark now how the molecule is stored so this is the molecule here atom you will find the atoms are given <clears throat> the atom that one storage that that is one is there atom two atom three atom four atom five so first column is of the field for that particular file second column that you will find uh, atom number here given then third column is the element here that is nitrogen and ca matlab c alpha c is there c that, that is carbonyl carbon then oxygen then c beta is there c beta then if two molecules are means like a chain that is that uh, the c beta c beta these both these carbon atoms are connected to c alpha then c all these are so and then residue name is there okay so lysine 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 like that then chain uh, name is there a or B, 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 then residue number. Obviously, it's an extracellular file. So, many of the residues are eliminated on both the terminal, N terminal and C terminal. So, mainly 15 to 19 residues, they are not, uh, they, are, they won't be shown over here. And then we have the coordinate system that is X, Y, and Z coordinate. So, first column, uh, after the residue numbers, we have a column number. So, this is the first column. Uh, X coordinate, this is Y coordinate here, and this is the Z coordinate. Then the symmetry is given. So that one. Then again, the element. So that's the rest of the part. So these are extracellular graphic data that's related with. But yeah, everyone is that is interested with this one. Yeah, how uh, that matters? Means atoms are there. Atom number is there. Then uh, elements. Uh, which element is there? Then position also it uh, specifies the C A alpha beta gamma. That position is also given. Then we have lysine residue name. Then chain. If a multiprotein is there, chain A B C D might be there. So chain A will be represented first, then second, third, and like B second, then C third. Then we have an element uh, residue number is there. Many of the extracellular graphic data that will lack the residues like 20 or 15 to 20 residues, they will lack at N terminal and C terminal. So that won't be excluded. That's the problem with the, that's uh, always uh, not determined in case of the extracellular graphic data. Then we have X coordinates. So these are the important data you can highlight. So you will find that three decimal places are used. That is 392. Okay, so nine zero. As I said, in the last MDL format, four decimal places are used here. Three, and that's also called when you're going for a calculations. And because all uh, the parameters means what is the energy associated with each atom is that's a constant. Uh, 
and when it's interacting with other molecules the contribution of uh, both the overlapping whether in case of the uh, this uh, hybridization theory so how much uh, overlapping orbitals there are mot theory what is the energy that depends on the distance between the two atoms how much attractive and repulsive forces are between the two so it's again a part of electronegativity and electropositivity that's all it's a part of chemistry then after uh, all atoms energy such termination is there then we have a heteroatoms so heteroatoms may be any molecules may be the water molecule may be a metal ions may be a small drug molecule may be dna molecule may be protein uh, may be other small protein peptide other or maybe another car carbohydrate uh, polymers or maybe small carbohydrate molecules or it may be a uh, 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 rna or dna molecule so that so it will be shown as heteroatom there so this is what a molecular formats or pdb format is and then it will show the connections how these are if heteroatoms are there, there they will connections will be shown like 321 is connected with the 2 uh, 21 so atom number 321 is connected with the uh, So here the atom connections you'll find that the atom number uh, 321 is connected to 2, uh, 2126. So in this way, many times these are required. Uh, how this where I can find the connectivity. So these are few important file formats like chemical markup language, CML is there, PDB that is protein data banks, major uh, maximum softwares are working with the PDB formats and they are well. Uh, acquainted with this one this is a universal format so uh, those software they always target means uh, that software will be the algorithm will always target to recognize the pdb or protein data bank format and always software take out that coordinate system mainly from that one uh, that file then gromax format is there that is for gromax uh, post field or simulation then charm of format like crd is there or psf Many softwares they won't recognize uh, the charm format or gromas format, so that times we need to convert that to other format. Then syllable line notation is there, smile formats. Okay, simple as your sir told you, uh, like um, for searching purpose, uh, confirmation. So that smile formats are used. Popcam format is there, XML, ASN1 format is there. Then XYZ, MDL format is there, MOL2 format is there, STF format is there. Then X. Um, besides that, uh, MOL1 uh, MOL three format is also there uh, so these different formats are developed by different databases but the major those are the formats that is pdb for a protein and mol format that is for those small molecules that are widely used and uh, there so like grow uh, then for force field calculation uh, those are the simulation or minimization tools are there so that's uh, that software they use specific their own formats like bromax is there for grow or cid that is for charms and dot psf they are using that then another format that is the charm C H A R M, so that one is the commercial and this is charm. Then M D, that's another uh, simulation or conformational searching algorithm is there that uses a different format. So we you can use this open table software to convert one format to other format. So this one is the freely available software. So you can convert any of the format. Like many of this software, they won't recognize. Uh, like Gromax, you can convert it to so another format. So open will, that software will, uh, that software can help you to convert one format to other format so that you can visualize that format to your own software. So it's very easy. So while these are the basic uh, techniques for molecular modeling, some sort, because when you're working with the free softwares, licensed software, there is no problems. Maximum software they cover. But uh, when you're working with the free software, so obviously you need uh, to have a different conversion from one format to other format. So OpenWebel is the software so that can be used to convert uh, for the file format conversion. Even it can convert like uh, even a multiple sequence alignment format can be converted from one file format to cluster uh, cluster without number of width number or even mega format. So you can convert it to JSS, uh, MSF, MSS format, MSF format. Uh, or you can convert it to GSS, GCC format also. <clears throat> so molecular visualization. Now third, that's a parameter or characteristics like how I can visualize the molecule. Once 3D coordinates are available, they can be visualized an important aid to the interpretation of molecules. So visualization actually mimicking or just uh, uh, what viewing the molecule in two dimensions and mimicking or uh, like uh, intuition is like uh, that of the three dimensional. So two techniques are mainly used here: the size of the molecule, the larger, uh, larger, uh, the molecule closer to the viewer will be larger in size, and those are uh, far away from the viewer, so it will, will be smaller in size. And then shedding, 
the molecule far away will be the lighter in uh, uh, appearance whereas the molecules which are closer to the viewers will be darker in uh, uh, darker in shades so that's the two main principles that are used for viewing the three dimensional graphics of the molecules and when you are slightly rotating the mouse uh, or uh, that one your scroll bar uh, so that time that time the slightly the back molecules they are broad means their size are increasing in relation to the uh, front molecule or viewers so it will give an appearance that the molecule you are rotating the molecule or you are displacing the molecule or you are zooming in the molecule or zooming out of the molecule then uh, how we can visualize different besides this uh, operations that are played on the molecular systems but how they can be presented like wireframe ball and stick and space field actually this shows the appearance space field model that's actually atomic means the nucleus surrounded by the electron and its potential and how the overlapping is uh, how, what is the extent of overlapping can be viewed with the space field model but ball and stick and wireframe now which one is the best model but if you are operating or when you are working with the <coughs> system on a graphics obviously the wireframe system will take a lesser memory as compared to the space field uh, model or ball and stick model so that's why when you are working or operation where you are zooming in out zooming out zooming in zooming out or when you are rotating the molecule where you are placing that time wireframe model is the best one so that can be easily uh, work with uh, these uh, basic operations of visualization of graphic as compared to the space field but when you are analyzing that the specific overlapping or point of contact between the two atoms so they can then space field model can be so this is how we can convert or change the visualization of a molecular system then ribbon for protein is a better way because obviously uh, when you are <coughs> side chains viewing the side chains of the protein it's very um, that also takes the molecule if you are viewing the protein in a ball and stick or space field model more uh, model obviously it will take a more memory and that's also stuck up your computers um, uh, stuck up your computer or hang your computer so that's why ribbon model or tray trace model or carton models they are very best suited for protein you can select out that part which you want to uh, visualize in ball and stick and all that so polyhedral mode uh, modes for example iconic lattices are their polyhedral you can show or even a plus charges or minus point plus sign or minus sign will show that there are metal ions so metal ion or non metals are there that is uh, uh, alkaline or alkali uh, alkali earth metals are there so that uh, like cal uh, calcium magnesium if they are present they can be presented like plus sign then iso surface uh, animations uh, integration of uh, scripting uh, so these uh, different visualization techniques can be used then molecular structural <coughs> structure how we can do fourth parameter that is molecular structure analysis so what type of analysis we can like refining the molecule detect the close atom contacts how the atoms are uh, in a close contact means uh, uh, <coughs> based on that this distance between the two atoms or the uh, that's the uh, distance between the two atoms so we can calculate uh, the interactions are studied so if they like uh, very close and uh, very uh, extent of overlapping is higher so we call this uh, like covalent bonding is there or ionic interactions is there but weak ionic interactions we call when the atom is uh, having the partial negative charges or partial positive charges so that time so then hydrogen bonding so it's considered many of this force field they consider hydrogen bonding as electrostatic interaction so weak electrostatic or distantly or it's also considered as ionic ionic uh, uh, charges because there is a donor there is a acceptor and both are uh, negatively charged but the difference of electronegativity is uh, great like oxygen and nitrogen both are negatively charged but oxygen has higher electronegativity as compared to nitrogen so obviously hydrogen will be hanging though it's present with the nitrogen so but it has small interaction so that's a part of hydrogen bonding and when the distance between the donor and acceptor that is considered as a 2.5 angstrom unit to 3.5 angstrom unit so that will be considered then detecting the bond length calculating the aromaticity anti aromaticity bond angle torsional angle then uh, steric hindrance detecting stereoelectronics isostars importance so <clears throat> all that properties molecular structures can be analyzed structurally then pocket volume accessible surface uh over there so that accessible surface means whether uh, drug binding probable that may be the drug binding or ligand binding probable sites or that <coughs> that pocket dimensions are also important so molecular structure and property how we can uh, fifth that is a molecular structure and property predictions is done simple rule based uh, heuristic method like orina for approximation to molecular structures we can 
the molecular mechanics methods are the larger molecular systems such as organic carbohydrate and peptides so where molecular mechanics can be used or empirical methods or semi empirical methods that can be used semi empirical quantum mechanics method molecular up to a size of medium size we have seen that so like when we have 5000 uh, atom atoms so there are uh, <coughs> maximum 10000 atoms so semi empirical methods are best for than ab initio methods or den density functional methods are there when the molecular size is very small that is about 250 or 500 atoms so there so you can apply the ab initio or density functional or this one uh, actually these are quantum mechanics methods so you can apply that method so you can optimize the molecule <coughs> very last system is there then you need to go for uh, wave functions so like topological analysis you can go then molecular reactivity and potential energy calculation that's one hukel theory is there so this is related to the force field <coughs> hukel theory that is extended to est is one of the force field basic that orbital correlations diagram and metal systems are multi reference systems you can use the semi empirical or ab initio density functional uh, df methods so these are all related with the molecular orbital theory or quantum mechanics uh, methods are there and then uh, it can just calculate so like reaction and bond formation cleavage bond energy potential energy surface then transition state modeling electron density distribution and stereo electronic properties excited state properties and reactions for so their intermolecular properties the molecular surface and charge distribution electrostatic so there are a number of properties over there even some of the properties you can calculate by using the chem sketch when you draw the molecule go for a uh, calculation so it will some of the physico chemical properties it can be calculated but i will i am telling you once more software it argus lab medica number so i will show you the argus lab software which can be used those are the beginners so they want to learn about the quantum um, uh this one uh, computational chemistry they can use the argus lab that software how they can use i will tell you the tutorials are there but it's not a research based software uh, you need to have other software so you can go for another force field but you can learn from that software how the computational chemistry uh, some basic subjects you can have hands on it also that software so geometry that's coming to now you have a yeah, you have a molecular assembly designed or you have the molecules over there with you this is basic i'm telling you which is there because you are going for simulations and all that but we uh, never understand these parts when you are stacking with the how we can manage the file how the, how the data is stored how we can visualize how what is the part or importance of visualization that is actually molecular graphics uh, we you know these are the small or very important things that are in the molecular modeling and that part so geometry optimization or energy minimization so it depends on the force field geometry means when we are optimizing the geometry of molecule obviously uh, the atoms shall always interact but they become stationary and uh, due uh, at the uh, at the distance where there uh, the forces attractive and repulsive forces <clears throat> that is between the electron and proton they are in equilibrium so that time they become slow and that uh, the attractor and repulsive that depends on how much electron cloud is there surrounding that the atoms so, okay. so force field refers to the form of parameters Uh, of a mathematical functions and used to describe the potential energy of a of a system of a particle. So it refers to the parameter of a mathematical function. So it's a parameter of <coughs> mathematical function that describes mainly the potential energy of a system. So obviously the potential energy of a system and it, <coughs> that one that potential energy is related to the distance between the two atoms. As you move uh, two molecule two atoms move away from each other, obviously the bond energy will uh, the potential energy will increase slowly. but when you bring the molecule uh, at a closer distance so their potential energy will decrease slowly because the forces of attraction will overcome and forces of repulsion will uh, increases and as you uh, at uh, uh, if you want if you try to bring that two atoms to closer to greater uh, beyond that limit where the uh, below that limit where the equilibrium forces are in equilibrium so obviously potential energy will increase and that was ready so molecular mechanics methods applied to optimize the geometry and then we have quantum mechanics now here what are the assumptions the atoms are considered as a ball of a different size uh, ball joined together by a spring of varying length so there this is the consideration that means always atoms are in motion uh, they are, are either vibrating or they are coming closer or the bending and stretching all these are the moments that are going on and then total energy is minimized with respect to the distance between the two atoms so this is the energy functions <coughs> that's one for empirical one that is e total energy total is that uh, is equal to the bonding energy and non bonding energy the importance is of non bonding energy when you are calculating your docking or a drug designing so that one is the important energy over there so 
energy of stretching energy bonding energy is comprised of the energy of stretching energy of bending and energy of torsional this is related with the uh, bonding energy and whereas uh, non bonding energy that is e van der waal forces uh, energy of electrostatic interactions uh, this is a dash sometimes they have considered uh, energy of <coughs> metallic coordinate uh, bond or there or energy of hydrogen bonding is there or sometimes uh, other energy or improper uh, angles uh, or improper interactions are there so that will be added for here that's a point so that's why that's that see total total energy of a molecule then e stretching bond stretching energy bond and bending energy torsional energy van der waal uh, <coughs> van der waal's energy or electrostatic how they are calculated this is uh, equations that one uh, consider energy functions so that is e stretching uh, this is uh, part of like uh, bond uh, k constant for bond stretching force constant kb and b is the that is unstrained bond length and d is the actual bond length what and unstrained bond length so that will give the uh, energy related with the stretching bond then bending that is related with the angle the change in angle that is the constant that is angle bending force constant k and then actual value for the theta and then the equilibrium value for the theta so on that basis the energy is calculated whereas uh, the equilibrium that's value considered as zero and when you divert from that equilibrium value theta so obviously the energy will either decrease or increase uh, sorry the energy will always increase so ac according to the energy will be calculated based on the distance now here you will come to that how the format or coordinate system or atoms positions are important there so all these uh, small equations <coughs> that is components of the energy functions are given over here how they are calculated and these things these equation is simulated every time so what is simulation so every time the uh, what force fields you are what is meant by force field actually it is comprised of uh, energy functions this one uh, then it has a parameters for a bond length bond angle standard bond length bond <coughs> energy bond angle all that parameters are there with the different component or element system so parameterization uh, this one i am coming to so force field defines the set of parameters for each type of atom like force field would include the distinct parameter for an oxygen atom in a carbonyl function group or in a hydroxyl so for example like force field that is for, that has a parameter for an oxygen atom for a carbonyl function it may have a different it has a different uh, different parameters as com as that as compared to the hydroxyl group <coughs> then typical parameter set includes what type of parameter sets uh, that are included in the force field the value for atomic mass wonder fall radius then partial charges for individual atom then equilibrium values of bond length bond angle and dihedral angle or ps uh, or a triplet so that then quadruplet of the bonded atoms values corresponding to effective spring constant or each potentials so that may even the coordinate system the metal ions vacant orbitals that will be considered what is the energy associated with it, how much electrons it can uh, occupy so that will also but that is another different force field for coordinate system or even there are some force field that can be applied to the radioactive elements also so that type of different are uh, there so those are working at the complex salt so they have a different force field so it depends on what type of chemical systems you are using so the force field so uh, you can uh, change but uh, like drug designing obviously the proteins are there and uh, the molecules so small ligand molecules are there we uh, many a times so this <coughs> metal ions are used means a drug with the metal ions so how uh, it interacts so that time you have a different force field you can go for but based one is like amber is uh, that is assisted model building and energy refinement that is widely used for the protein and dna then charm is another one that is chemistry of harvard molecular mechanics original developed by harvard and widely used for both small molecules as well as the uh, macro molecules then charm commercial version of charm that is it's a commercial and that is the this is the free version and this is the commercial version mainly available with axles then gromas gromax is there gromos is there gromos for proteins you can find its spdu also that is a uh, gron engine molecular simulation package a general purpose you can have but uh, many of these are available in uh, unix or linux system then opls that is optimized potential for liquid simulations if you have a liquid system you are using either water or maybe the ethanol so that time you may have these force fields when uh, to study that interaction or energy then you have that is a general force fields when you want to optimize a molecule uh, rough optimization of the geometry of a molecule UFF will lack that all elements and some of the parameters for that. So the optimization is an optimization. Uh, it will just correct on the bond length, bond angle, and torsional angle. But rest that is ocular interaction or some 
distance uh, interactions uh, will not be corrected by UFF. That's what uh, drawback it has. So that's why Umber then MD is also there. One other uh, uh, force field. Besides some basic <laughs> small molecular force fields are there. AM1 is there. PM uh, PM3 is there. That one uh, EST is the uh, extended Huckel theory is that one is uh, the force fields available. Uh, now, how the energy man have an minimization procedure? Means when you are design the draw the molecule in chem sketch, you can go for it. So even the chem sketch can optimize the molecule with the slip phase descent. Uh, general optimization, it will just correct the bond length, bond angle, and torsional angle uh, when you convert it to the three dimensional. But you can also optimize by using the other softwares, others like I as as I do it with the Argus lab many times by using the quantum mechanics for small molecules. But I can refine two or three times. The two classes uh, uh, that can so energy minimization procedure that's algorithm. So it's uh, divided into two class that is first derivative that is steep as distance conjugate gradient Poisson and second derivative actually conjugate gradient it's again second derivative that is the uh, uh, modified version. Then second derivative Newton Raphson's or related algorithms are there. So always uh, steep as descent method is the first that is used. <coughs> steep as descent method. Is usually a numerical calculate first derivative of the energy function to approach the energy minimum. So always, uh, uh, every molecule will try to uh, acquire that information which is having the lowest energy minima or lowest potential energy it has. And uh, accordingly, the bond angle, bond length, and torsional angle will be adjusted there. So here, what we are doing is like protein folds uh, randomly. Okay. Uh, in we in uh, uh, vitro, but in vivo it is the guided protein folding is there, and chaperonin or some proteins are they are mainly they are mainly involved and they guide the protein folding. Whereas in case of uh, uh, in in vitro, the protein folds randomly. So obviously there are different areas of their energy landscape is the widely used where the the protein will try to acquire that lowest global energy minima and it will fold accordingly. Actually, it will. Uh, Nullify all that atomic forces which are uh, that uh, strain on the bonds. To relieve that strain, the fold or the bond angle and torsional angle will be adjusted. <coughs> so that rough uh, optimization of the geometry and geometry what it consists of. It's like bond length, bond angle and torsional angle. So they will be accordingly that uh, bond length, bond angle and torsional angle will be adjusted and energy will, uh, will be minimized. So calculate it first derivative. Okay. The energy is calculated for the initial geometry. While first it will calculate the energy for the first geometry. Then one atom uh, is moved uh, in a small increment in either of the directions of the coordinate system. Again, the energy is calculated. Then again, next time. So this will till the molecule goes for a downhill state, the energy will be calculated and uh, the atomic positions or coordinates will be changed again the energy so this will this process uh, procedure will be continued till it goes to the minimum energy potential okay so procedure will stop if the predetermined minimum condition is fulfilled whenever it goes to that minimum conditions that is minimum potential energy it will stop for that the first rough and introductory method used to refine so this is the first step method and obviously, when it reaches to the minima, this steepest distance method, when it reaches to the minima, obviously, it goes for a looping and uh, creates error. So that's why always the steepest descent method, uh, 100 cycles or 200 cycles should be given, not more than that. So whenever you refine the molecules, uh, all molecules, when you draw the molecules or design the molecules, the first uh, steepest descent method is applied or minimizer is applied to the molecule so that uh, uh, the bond angle, bond length, and torsional angle can be adjusted accordingly, uh, roughly, so that the molecule can have a minimum optimum structure or uh, geometry can be uh, minimum uh, optimized geometry the molecule can achieve. Then, <coughs> then second method is uh, that one is the conjugate gradient. Again, accumulate the information about now difference between the conjugate and steepest descent. Conjugate gradient it uh, accumulates the information of the previous uh, generation. Or previous iteration of it so that the process may it may change the direction if that energy has been that position is already present in the molecule so it will avoid that position and it will go to the next direction or another direction calculate the energy and compare the energy with the previous if it is lower than that it will be accepted and move to the next direction or next vector so uh, uh, of the minimization procedure <laughs> if the present 
energy is lesser than the previous energy so obviously it will so in this way <coughs> it will continue with the uh, direction excuse me it did but uh, at first if you can't use the conjugate gradient so we because when it <coughs> when you apply the first or uh, first stage or first step when you apply the conjugate gradient method so obviously the molecule may take a long way not uh, feasible but when it reaches to the uh, minimum it becomes very fast and optimize the molecule very fast <coughs> and same is the case of this one newton raphson method also they can be applied after applying the steepest descent if the molecule is very rough then apply the steepest descent and then apply the newton raphson method so that you can have a optimum or minimum potential energy or optimum geometry of a molecule then we have uh, these are the methods that uh, that can be used for optimization molecule and these energy methods are also useful for this one <coughs> uh, uh, your molecular modeling and uh, that one just i'm showing uh, one software uh, here that uh, uh, So this is the software I was telling about, uh, Argus Lab. Uh, very, you can download it from. It's a Windows based, and you can rotate the molecule here, and <coughs> you have like atoms over there. So this is what a molecular window is there. Then we have a graphics window here. Uh, this one where you can have molecules here. Zooming you can do, or zooming zoom out. You can, uh, if you you can write. <coughs> So you have a like on this uh, here on the menu bar you will find the file edit view calculations uh, in calculations you'll find the energy calculation optimize the geometry uv visible spectrum gaussian calculation the docking dock of a ligand so you can get dock of a single ligand or you can have a docking dock a database over there either you can run and kill suspend and resume that one then surface calculation surface uh, make a surface like that i will not because it will take a large memory so i'm not doing any calculation but some basic calculation i will try to do here then we have like a quick homo lumo here some computational chemistry then monitor distance angle torsional remove bumps for their one uh, from your molecules here label selected atoms you can uh, label the selected atoms all atoms or atom labeling settings and setting color display color you can set the molecular how you can color display electric field over there lighting molecules monitor quickness and ribbon also then some tools like builder tool is there so you, i will show that but windows you can hear but he uh, help you can find the tutorials <clears throat> so here in the tutorials can you visualize can you see the tutorial uh, here on the screen Uh, sir, we can see the 3D structure, and uh, besides that, on the left side there is a folder. Okay, so I'm just uh, yeah. sharing the screen now. Okay, uh, better stop. Now you can see my screen also here. Okay, so here you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Uh, tutorial and FAQs. Okay. So for learning purpose, uh, for uh, not for a research, but uh, basic some ideas, it will clear your some of the ideas over there. So here, that's on a build a benzene and uh, optimize its geometry. You can have so like some molecules are uh, given there. 
<clears throat> how you can build the benzene molecule and optimize the geometry so it, it is explained everything here <clears throat> it is explained so you can do and this one is how operate so i can even uh, draw a molecule by using this one i'm just highlighting my pointers you can draw the molecule by using this one I, even i can add the molecules here the rings there amino acids there i can add atoms are there even you can geometry you can set the unspecified linear or trigonal and uh, tetrahedral then periodic table from periodic table also you can draw this is a, like a game sketch also simple it's a, but here you can uh, define the geometry of molecule whether unspecified linear or trigonal planar or tetrahedral that geometry then how many number of say, uh, <clears throat> number of atoms are there so you can have that undefined uh, so different elements are given so you can select that elements but if you don't want that do uh, if you have molecules you can do like that one this is the tree molecule so you will find that the left side pan atoms are there so if you uh, expand the atom field so you will find the n c c c like that and when you expand the n first and so name is given and what is the hybridization it's given over there then in residue you will find the amino acids number of amino acids are there like what is the conformation 24th alanine coil 25th alanine coil meaning which conformation is present like beta strand then beta strands so like that so different amino acids i can visualize now all they are hidden over here <coughs> but i can show one residue show so now it is you will find that residue that amino acid is there So this is the amino acid. So one is the alanine. Okay, this one is the alanine. So you'll find that this is the alanine oil. You can label that residue here. So you can I can label this one mark ligand group or residue. So you can do some of the basic things. Even this is also possible with the Discovery Studio. Uh, that's visualization tool of the Discovery Studios free. Uh, you can uh, do that things. So now here two are the like line. This is drawing mode. So I will just convert it to uh, visualization mode. Okay. So I need to centralize these atoms. So it will centralize. This command will centralize. So these are some of the basics. Now oxygen water molecules are in uh what they are in red uh, dot over there hydrogens are not appearing so obviously i said and this is the metal ion here you will find that a metal ion so this is the positive ion is shown The positive ion that will you you can see over here. So this is the positive ion. So metal ion is the plus sign. So here the while docking also all you need to find the binding site and you need to define the ligands while doing that. But all uh, tutorials uh, the in tutorial you find that in uh, <coughs> I have this NHIV protease inhibitor. So you can go for this docking. All the molecules are given in the itself with this PDB. So you can learn out. How you can perform the docking here in this how this docking can be performed with this uh, this software using each stepwise they have explained uh, so that you can understand uh, whether it's a grid formation the protein then the defining the binding sites then uh, ligand preparation uh, binding site preparation ligand preparation one by one so uh, go for a single one or two ligands and then you can uh, prepare the library for it so these are the greater even some chemistry tutorials are also better over there like visualization the molecular orbitals you can visualize over there how you can do with that uh, study the computational or chemistry is uh, that part then calculate the electron electron you visible absorption spectrum where for benzene so it will then make the esp map how you can overlapping surface you can form that one electron like uh, uh, that potential surface area so you can visualize in a different way you can do that one then what happens when the electron is such because this is required to generate the field uh, to uh, def uh, define the field to calculate the field after different computational methods are there <coughs> or trips and then this is docking it so i think this uh, software is very good for uh, studying or uh, learning purpose 
So uh, you can use that. You can download the software and you go for a tutorial software so that you can learn. Those are the beginners for that, so they can learn from it. And it's a good one, good software, best. So you can also visualize this one. Just I'm giving the show protein. So it's one. I will just uh, hide this one. Uh, render the protein rendering. Uh, protein rendering is hired uh, now, and you can just find out. You can rotate. So ball and stick is the model. So now uh, it takes a uh, memory, but for study purpose, it's a good software. For docking, that can be better. We can do it with the auto dock. So this is all about the this one. Now just I'm moving to the SARS code. What are the opportunities over there? And uh, many of the studies that is gone. So we have just uh, key uh, points have covered in the molecular modeling. It's a vast area. But how we can how we can uh, improve? So uh, many of this in silico work is going on of SARS. Uh, besides the wet lab, the dry lab study is also there. <coughs> and that's why there are number of genomes are. Uh, sequence so severe acute respiratory syndrome that is coronavirus to COVID-19. Uh, okay, the, uh, we come to know that virus in November or December that time. So yeah, that was okay generated as a uh, epidemics uh, uh, pandemics. Man, it's a 19 uh, in December 2019 in Wuhan, China. That's why it's also called as the Wuhan virus. Since from the first report that is December uh, 19. The effect infection has more than like till this is the 22nd May data that is uh, 65 lakhs were the patients. Now we have more than three crores of patients. Uh, today's number is like 3.9, uh, 20 crores is the data, and death is like a, death is around 9.6 uh, lakhs are the death toll uh, as per the WHO World Health Organization uh, 23rd. And then so as you can get the data from this NCBI special portal is also designed for this one to getting the access for the SARS uh, virus data. You can go to this NCBI. They have a special portal for SARS CoV-2 sequences. EBI also having. And I'll find that. So first, uh, the, after this uh, December 2019, and first uh, the genome that was sequenced like uh, 2000 January in that. After that, the huge amount of data has been generated. Around 16,000 genome sequences are there. So COVID-19, that is uh, the uh, within the China itself. So this is the data of uh, in third uh, June. Third uh, June, I updated that time. Greater than uh, more than 65 lakhs were the patients, all of the infected patient persons all over the world, and uh, death toll was 3.84 lakhs over there. So this is the data. And now on yesterday so what is it, the 23rd of september it is around uh, 3.16 crores more than that's like it has reached to 3.20 crores today morning uh, people and do the death toll has gone on to 9.72 lakhs so it's a major uh, that's one and uh, i don't know Ms. actually this depends on the testing testing has been increased but another study is also uh, uh, going with uh, that study is they are also trying uh, they are also uh, doing the antibody antibody detections uh, the person to find out I means how many are there those are asymptomatic or symptomatic uh, asymptomatic patients who are there or those are they have already generated the antibodies against the virus so if we find the coronavirus cases okay re recovered so this uh, mild condition uh, that infection gone from 98 to 99 now and serious and critical condition has reduced from 2% so it was 2% in uh, june now it has been uh, gone to 1% in uh, this one. The recovered set like 96% in uh, this one, uh, September 23rd. Death rate, uh, death rate is also increased. It was 11 in case of uh, in uh, June, month of June, and it is now 4. So slowly the recovery rate in Indian conditions, the recovery rate is increased uh, around it's now 81. And fatality rate is going down. It's now 1.6. I think it has gone more down. And major cities like Gujarat, major states like Gujarat, Bombay, or Maharashtra, they are having the high death uh, toll over there. And they are having the higher fatality rate as compared to like many of the states. Uh, that's maybe the uh, Bihar, Jharkhand, or Chhattisgarh, or even the UP, and uh, some of the northern uh, northeast uh, states over there. So they are having a very lesser rate over there. So this is the data. If, but can we see in that outbreak okay those are the patients we those are the people so those are the patients which are having the very high uh they're having the uh, some other problems complications in the body uh disorders so they are more prone for the disease uh, severe conditions in uh uh this one uh covid 19. so this is all sequencing i'm just i don't cover 
but uh, at present around 24000 uh, genomes are available for 24000 uh, genome sequences of this one are available and complete genomes are 16643 whereas partials are 7400 and 506 <laughs> india has also contribution maximum sequences are from usa around uh, 20 uh, around uh, out of 16653 uh, 13000 uh, 12000 sequences are of that of the usa itself from sequence from that uh, not uh, 12000 it's around 11000 sequences from usa and and rest like 4 uh, 4000 are from australia and rest all over the world india has also contributed in you know, see, genome sequencing so around 500 sequences are submitted from indian side and rest other countries they have sub, uh, submitted so this is what we have around the proteins available protein sequences that is 2 lakh uh, 2 lakh 56295 that is the protein so you can use these data for the analysis those are interested to go for a research or work with this uh, data that is available then uh, since from that's so like okay so this is genome i'm not going for so this is the genomic, uh, this is the general structure I've retrieved from this one uh, slide that is the rule of effects uh, felt science .com. Uh, This is the viral structures we have a spy, uh, the virus uh, structure is uh, having the spike glycoproteins, then another up sheet, so membrane over there, that is E, S, M, that is membrane protein, and H, that is membrane, uh, hemagglutinin, uh, esterase, then nucleoprotein is there, and then genomic RNA. So it's RNA virus. Uh, then this is the genomic structure of architecture of the virus uh, data that I have uh, taken it from chemitol and uh, it's like there as ORF1A and ORF1B the, which produces around ORF1 and that's 11 non-structural proteins are produced by that one uh, translated and ORF1 with that uh, translated into a, a non-structural protein 16 types of non-structural protein but besides the spike protein is important one uh, that is the main binding site so that binds to the host uh, cell uh, for the multiplication mainly the ace to enzyme and transmembrane uh, protein so these are the proteins uh, they are mainly interacting for the entry they are uh, facilitating the entry of uh, uh, these virus into the uh, cell that are expressing these two proteins that is the ace 2 enzyme that is the angi and angiotensin converting uh, enzyme 2 and uh, transmembrane protein so these two then uh, there's some membranes these are actually this is the changes between the SARS-1, <coughs> SARS-CoV and uh, the MERS-CoV. So these two viruses, the changes are only within this re region, uh, their mutations are there and that has produced, you see that one, how this, so I'm not going for this one. So the total there are 10 ORFs are there, 14 ORFs are considered, 14 is a question mark because some of the overlapping genes are also present in these uh, uh, virus genomic structures architecture uh, this one is the difference between this uh, sars cov uh, sars cov covid 19 that is sars cov 2 sars cov uh, and uh, that is mers cov so it is the difference between this uh, uh, mainly the envelope protein membrane protein and the nuclear capsule protein uh, that one over there so you'll find that the difference of the position of this one these different proteins over here uh, this attachment of spike mainly how this interacting with the host how it gets an entry to the host sars cov 2 so ace 2 enzyme is there and then the transmembrane uh, uh, prss this is the protein so these are those facilitating or mainly they are interacting they're interact there uh, this is the acti uh, this is the activation and attachment so these are the two proteins that are important for the entry of this virus inside the uh, cell uh, inside the host cell now uh, how many uh, proteins of covid 19 virus uh, 19 viruses are there so like seven uh, the proteins like orf1 a b is there that is orf1 a and orf b so the total length of protein is around 7096 uh, that is orf1 a b polyprotein it's there actually there is a one transmutation one uh, trans uh, shift uh, frame shift uh, translation is there uh, by one nucleotide uh, between the ORF1 and ORB and then ORF1, 11 NSPs are uh, non-structural proteins are produced and that from the ORF1B, uh, that's a 2, uh, 16 uh, they are produced. Then 4, that is ORF1 and polyprotein, then 1, 2, so spike protein is another larger protein over there. Then uh, ORF3A protein, envelope protein, that's envelope present, membrane protein is there, then ORF6, 7A, 7B, 7, uh, ORF8, one the nuclear capsid protein,
but these two proteins one uh, for a drug that is cap dna rna methyl transfer is is targeted and capsid protein so non structural uh, proteins are uh, uh, they are targeted for drug design so potential target like out of uh, the studies have shown 332 uh, protein uh, human proteins are interacting with sars cov2 protein and total 66 protein they are found to be potential for drug targets which having the interactions they are safe for uh, on this one and total ppi like protein protein interactions are proved by the computational method out of these 66 20 are proved 26 are proved by expert system and remaining are under the trials so there are like uh, many and many of them have gone for the clinical trials so they have synthesized so they have found some of the drugs like protein translation inhibitors like zota titanium and termodynamic ps3061 sigma 1 sigma 2 receptors ligand like lamastatic chloroprestone so progesterone is that's why females are more uh resistant to that one so then pb28 is there then main potential targets like uh spike protein is envelope is membrane protein and nuclear capsid protein but mainly spike protein is targeted to many of the researchers and the envelope protein then nsp6 nsp non-structural protein six many drugs are there found to be observed to be interacting with the nsp nsp7 nsp14 and nsp orf 9b orf 9c so these are the studies over there so not my way, main work is mainly related with the genome that is codon acid pattern analysis and its origin so uh, that's what uh, that's what uh, uh, i am not really many of them i'm not tried that but mainly i'm trying for that one what is the evolutionary aspects of these uh, viruses for that so <clears throat> This is I'm not going for an engineered one. So this is the changes. So that's when we spike protein. It has a change over there. And that's it. Uh, that's why this virus become more uh, uh, more uh, lethal as compared to the other virus because of this one. P R P R A S. That is the uh, link uh, for glycan uh, residue. There is polybasic uh, cleavage site is there, and that's why this is one of the cause that has been linked. So spike protein. As it said, so that's mainly, uh, I'm not going for this one, strategy using the ACE2 decoy protein. So they've tried, this one is the drug uh, by ACE2 residue binding for everybody. So uh, this one has shown then vaccine designing, I'm not going. But what can be the research areas? That is like viral infection sources, what are that? Then mutation probability and rate of that one, then severe mutant strains. So then phylogeny and infection mechanisms posting the capability to the other part of the body what is the capability the potentials it may okay it's binding to that cells which having the ace 2 enzyme over there but can it be bind to other enzymes like the binding of the sars cov has a different mers virus as a different target so why it has uh, this binding site so what is the future it may bind to the another part of the body or another uh, target it may find so that depends on the spike protein mutations there then therapeutic target identification that's whether vaccines we are struggling uh, many companies are involved in the vaccine designing or many drugs are there but still they are under trial conditions in silico work a lot of in silico works has proposed the or model or uh, model the model the molecules for there or even the libraries they are presented but uh, on the wet lab or in vitro studies a very lesser number of molecules are found to be um, uh, potential one and uh, some of them under clinical trial also so that you can <clears throat> that uh, hope in a few months we will find the complete solution for that vaccines we get a good uh, sometimes we get the result uh, sometimes we get the good news and again sometimes again it fails so that's a possibility but maximum population of india's population is uh, i think it's immune uh, as uh, the studies are showing, the Delhi study they are showing so 50% population, around 40% of that's uh, found, observed to be the antibody produced against the virus uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, it was a study in uh, June or July. They found it's uh, like 25%. 
population as the antibodies and now in the august end or they found that's around 40% of this uh, population they have acquired the antibodies against coronavirus so hope i tried uh, some of the basic focus of molecular key aspects uh, key uh, points of the molecular modeling and uh, what are the areas that you can focus with the, for the research in covid for finding the solutions and that will be there thank you thank you very much sir very much sir for uh, this an excellent talk and uh, regarding whole uh, not only you have delivered theoretical aspect also uh, included all practical aspect related with this particular uh, bioinformatic approach uh, so now arpit uh, can we conduct q and a session with sir yes sir uh, we are ready with the questions and uh, the first question we have from priyanka da costa she is asking can this be used to understand tissue structure which it, which can then be correlated to texture like in the food industry tissue structure yeah hello tissue structure yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, that one be elliptical means actually tissue structure uh, it's a, it it is a more larger system it's not possible we are uh, we can understand by elliptical that's need the system then other uh, graphical system can be used <coughs> the molecular assembly like virus particles are there or some multi protein assemblies are that can be we can study that because for a tissue system or a cell ha huh, but some property based analysis that needs the by using the data mining techniques this can be uh, applied to that part so either neural network is there or classification cluster analysis or different uh, uh, data mining techniques can be used to understand the properties of the uh, for uh, that can be used over there but not uh, molecular modeling or that techniques uh, won't be possible feasible because uh, that system is a larger again there thank you so much sir hello. the next question we have hello yes sir thank you sir Are... the next the, the next question we have uh, sir could you explain the exact uh, meaning of topology and any online software to work on that uh you can uh, topology means actually uh, that's a like uh, flow it's a like outline of that particular molecule we are drawing it's like how the molecule like helix uh, turn helix is there so we can represent it by three dimensional structure but you can also represent by topology by drawing that helix uh, that's a round structure or even like structure uh, but uh, the beta strand will be shown like uh, arrow there so we can so what type of art like uh, you can draw it on a paper that how the how this uh, particular uh, uh, um, uh, that ribbon uh, that uh, different secondary structures of the protein are following okay so uh, that can but uh, molecular like you can have uh, you can go to the pdb databases while understanding this uh, interaction 3d it's very difficult but topologically you can present that interactions and the uh, various databases even that this software discovery studio can also be uh, also uh, show you that uh, uh the topological structures also even secondary databases like cats cop is there they also show you the uh, topological even pdb has that when if you explore the pdb databases you will find that the presentation of the molecule in two dimensional uh, topological form over there <coughs> thank you Next, so much sir, sir. Uh, the next question we have the which mb simulation and force field is preferable nowadays if we study for novel coronavirus inhibitory molecules uh <coughs> amber is better charm is better because you have a macromolecular system so protein system you are using because target is a protein over there and you have a small molecule but uh, the force field uh, many of the force fields are there when you are using the metal ions over there so that time this uh, force field not work uh, better way when metal ions are there because we need the metal parameters so there should be included but amber is also charm is also it has their own works uh, if you work with that system so widely used like amber force fields many are they are using sir is also using and charm so both the force fields are better but if you go for a commercial one charm that is uh, by this discovery studio they are using so that one is a better and uh, if you are using a metal bound uh, ligands or metal presenting ligands over there so better strodinger that software is one uh, i i liked one and that software is better but both the so uh, that depends on one practices how you can but for polymer 
as you are using charms and abar these are the better uh, uh, these are widely used for swords for that thank you sir the last question we have for you uh, sir is there any a tool for understanding the virtual screening of drug like compounds uh Uh, that one is actually virtual screening you are going for a docking itself uh, conformational uh, you try to work with the software argus lab uh, hope you will understand how the screening actually it's manually we do it automation we never understand uh, what is happening over there but uh, if you try to work with the argus lab software uh, that's very easy for research I don't uh, miss i don't uh, recommend this software but for learning okay it can be some small molecule it can do but auto dock can be done that but virtual screening itself a molecule if a molecule a library of 1 lakh or 2 lakhs compounds are there and uh, then you are screening out of that ones which having the bonding potential so you are screening out based on the some physical chemical properties mainly the interaction of that uh, molecule ligand molecules with that uh, target molecule so some of the software you can use there but discovery studio is there uh, software that can be used uh, for screening purpose or uh, some uh, commercial softwares are better Uh, as compared to the our uh, free software, so that time free software you have to work mainly for Linux system. You have maximum number software, number of softwares are you uh, available uh, over there. Uh, for there uh, you have. But for learning purpose, if you want to understand this, how the molecule is binding uh, each molecule. Every uh, means if you work with the Argus lab, you define the molecular binding system so there. and if you have a uh, screen out six molecules are there which you ligand and out of that six which one is the best one in in terms of the binding uh, efficiency then you can compare the six molecule that is the manual learning you will come to know that how the automated system the automatic software automations will do when you have a library of a molecules because you don't need so you need to supply the library of the molecules to that uh, system and uh, ligand library and uh, to the target molecule so automatically you take the molecules and based on the parameter you defined so it will uh, screen out the molecules but when you do it manually it come to know that how the screening is carried out okay how means one by we see you bind manually that molecules to your uh, target uh, protein then second molecule then third molecule and compare their energy outflow their interactions where is it interacting but first uh, manually you need to define how what are the binding site probable binding site of that of protein so it can do but when you don't know what the binding sites at that time it's uh, obviously when you have you know the binding sites probable binding sites you can define it so time will be lesser because it has to searching because you have restricted your searching criteria to particular binding site but when we don't know about the binding site in the protein the probable binding it will be found by the uh, that uh, all conformational we call the conformational searching so it will search that conformations which are probably the binding sites and it will try out all the positions again it will increase the time of the systems for the uh, time of the system due to the large number of calculations so hope uh, uh, you can go for that uh, argus lab softwares better way to learn these things and then you can uh, go for automations uh, or automation systems so online there are number of softwares available but for docking purpose i told you so like z doc yesterday dr nilanjan told you had doc is there patch doc is there auto doc is the better one for docking or for studying the inter interactions i call in other way the conformational searching means which is the probable or most optimum conformation of uh, that uh, ligand with respect to the target uh, binding site of a target so that will be better thank you any more questions sir No sir, uh, thank you so much sir. That's all we have from the QA session. Uh, over to you, Dr. Kamlesh Chaudhary sir. Thank you very much sir. Uh, as a program coordinator, I must congratulate to you and also very much uh, thankful to you that you accepted our invitation to be here as convener and also as a speaker of any eminence. Now I'm handing over this uh, whole program to you to convene as convener sir. Now I request uh, Dr. Nilanjan Banerjee sir. for uh, starting his uh, training session yes thank you sir so <clears throat> dr yes. nilanjan i welcome you uh, good morning sir yeah good morning sir <clears throat> and that's actually been a wonderful topic that you discussed in when i uh, in fact learned so many things about the mol file format i use mol file format but actually i lack the knowledge about how it is different from the pdb file especially the uh, the 
Dr. Desimal, and those are really wonderful things to learn. Uh, I'm really glad that actually I get to hear your uh, talk. Actually, it's very extended. I thought to take some of the basics that are required for manual and what's happening inside the molecule and that one. <laughs> but uh, your topic is very good, so I, I learned that one also. Sir, uh, you can uh, yes. continue, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, sure. yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, so, okay, uh, let me share my screen. And uh, okay, so is this visible? Okay. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, so you can get it. Uh, so, so I will start with this uh, virtual screening. In fact, uh, Kishore sir just uh, just now discussed about this particular thing that virtual screening why it's so important and how you can uh, conduct this virtual screening. So I'm just going to give you a nutshell idea about this particular thing. That so we know that this uh, virtual screening is some is a, a computational technique that is used in this drug discovery field to search for. Uh, libraries of small molecule uh, in order to identify uh, specifically those particles which are most likely to bind to a particular drug target and this drug target i have mentioned in the previous uh, day that uh, those are usually the proteins that uh, and among the proteins those are usually the receptors or enzymes right now uh, this virtual spinning method has actually been very popular in both the pharmaceutical industry and also in the academic industry and that is due to the low time low cost low research and uh, obviously it also saves a huge amount of labor right and, uh, that this particular thing has been defined as an uh, automatically evaluating very large libraries of compounds using the computer program now uh, of course that uh, as this uh, particular definition suggests that uh, um, uh, this virtual screening has actually largely been a number game which uh, particularly focuses on how enormous the chemical space of over uh, um, lakhs of molecules are there and those are the considerable compounds which can be filtered to a manageable number that can be synthesized or that can be purchased and uh, those can be tested because obviously if we simply think of a particular target then uh, actually there are lakhs and lakhs of drug right uh, we cannot go and uh, screen all of those drug and do experimental uh, procedures with them so we seem to manage the number to simply reduce the number to a particular thing, I mean 10 20 so that uh, it's much easier to proceed from there and uh, uh, generally this uh, uh, the ligand based virtual spinning method uh, generally uses this uh, information that is present in the known active ligands uh, rather than the structure of the target protein for both uh, the lead identification and of course for the optimization now the ligand based methods are typically uh, only chosen when there is no 3d structure of the target protein is available right and in those cases we simply have to uh, depend upon the homology modeling to simply to um, or some ab initio modeling or the protein threading to build up the uh, structure right now uh, this virtual screening whenever we talk about virtual screening as i mentioned that there are actually two methods one is the ligand based method and another is the structure based method in case of structure based method we of course have the structure we have to just screen for the lakhs and lakhs of compound and which are present in the various libraries um kishore sir has already discussed about those libraries he has discussed various databases right and i also showed you the drug bank and e-molecule uh, databases uh, unlike uh, like those there is also another database called sync database and uh, which are already been discussed and uh, those uh, databases actually harbor a huge amount of uh, small molecules either those molecules which have been synthesized or those molecules which have been predicted uh, that can show some drag likeness and all and from those they simply you have a so you have a model you simply share you have a whole screen you simply uh, simply manage those lakhs and lakhs molecule to a few uh, amount and then you either synthesize those uh, molecules or you simply uh, do then do the in vitro assays to uh, gather the knowledge about them and to find out the best uh, molecule that can uh, suit this to this particular uh, method and uh, uh, now this identification of this lead compound such uh, that uh, the, which shows this pharmacological activity against a particular biological target and uh, and the progressive optimization of those uh, properties and the potency of these compounds are actually the focal point for an early stage of drug discovery and uh, to this end the pharmaceutical industry has adopted this experimental screening of very large libraries of chemical against this uh, therapeutically relevant target right and we generally uh, term it as a high throughput screening or hts 
right? And uh, uh, this is done to simply identify a new lead compound. But the main drawback uh, for this particular thing is that uh, these are not generally, if you want to do a high impact research to find out the actual target that can be marketable, obviously you have to use the paid version softwares. The softwares are there, which are actually paid softwares. We have to buy them, buy those softwares. Those are not uh, freely available. And uh, those are actually, as sir has already mentioned, that uh, uh, the Discovery Studio or the Short Engine also uh, provides some useful uh, modules and platforms to uh, run these screenings. And, uh, and of course, you have to get this, uh, you have to develop the pharmacophore of these molecules, right? Uh, now, what is this pharmacophore is actually an, uh, uh, is, is an abstract description of the various molecular features uh, that are necessary for a particular uh, uh, molecular recognition of that ligand by a biological target, right? Uh, and now, uh, now generally, this pharmacophore can be defined as an, uh, you can say that uh, they are generally an ensemble of various uh, static and electronic features, right? Uh, that is necessary to ensure that uh, the optimal uh, supramolecular interaction with this uh, specific target uh, is obtained and it can that particular complex that bonding can trigger some of the biological response uh, the desired biological response that we need and uh, uh, this model actually explains how this structurally diverse ligand they can bind to a very common receptor site and uh, uh, and they can be used to identify uh, through the de novo design or by the virtual screening of this uh, novel ligand uh, those molecules that will uh, bind to the same receptor, right? Now, uh, typical pharmacophoric features generally include the hydrophobic centroids, the aromatic rings, uh, the hydrogen bond acceptors, uh, the do of donors, the number of uh, the cations, and like this, right? And uh, uh, and this pharmacophoric point uh, can be located on the ligand itself, or they may be uh, projected. Uh, uh, to be located on the uh, receptor, right? Now, uh, now usually we provide, uh, we people go for the structural based for designing, right? Because uh, as I mentioned that having a structure and designing a ligand uh, that can fit to the perfect, uh, that particular uh, active site or the particular uh, groove is uh, much better. Uh, that's much better, right? And that's why people go for this uh, structural based drug designing. And through this uh, high throughput screening, uh, the active compounds, antibodies or genes, and anything which can modulate a particular biomolecular pathway can be identified. And this step actually provides a starting point for the drug discovery and for understanding the role of this uh, particular biochemical process um, that, uh, that is present in, this, uh, in your biology, right? Now, although this uh, high throughput screening, it remains a method of choice for drug discovery in the pharma industry, uh, there are various drawbacks to this method. And uh, obviously, the first thing is that a high cost and the uh, time demanding character for the whole process, as well as the uncertainty of the mechanism of action of those active ingredients uh, that have uh, uh, led to the increasing uh, employment of uh, various rational structure based drug designing. And, uh, and that is actually uh, this particular thing is used with some uh, when it is coupled with the other computational method like uh, molecular dynamic simulation and uh, the molecular docking or modeling. <coughs> Sorry, and then it can actually be a wonderful um, uh, system that can uh, give rise to some um, neat and very clean and a very stringent molecule that that is highly specific to your particular target, but. Uh, for your general use, and this uh, for your general use, generally uh, people uh, there is a software and platform that has been developed for uh, which is a uh, which is uh, which can be used academically uh, in a free version, right? And that's the MPI Open Screen. Now this uh, uh, the research group has actually developed this uh, very new web server. This is the MPI Open Screen web server, and it is actually dedicated for the uh, small molecule docking and the virtual screen. This uh, particular MPI open screen actually offers uh, the possibility to do screen uh, almost 5000 of small molecules in a single run uh, and which can be selected in various databases 
or you can also uh, if you are to if you want to simply dock a particular uh, molecule to a, a ligand then uh, that number simply moves up to uh, almost uh, 10000 to almost 1 lakhs compound which are actually ready uh, to be docked away. and this automatically docking software is also provided by this mpi open scheme it actually houses two services uh, one is the mpi auto dock and another is the mpi open scheme now in this particular mpi uh, Feature, what you have to do is you can simply upload the, your target molecule. You can upload your target molecule that you have either the uh, that is the protein or enzyme anything uh, with the either with the mole two version first with the difference between these two versions, right? Uh, so once you upload this uh, particular thing as a mole two version or the PDB version, and then you have to upload uh, the ligands. Now you can upload up to 10 ligands at a time and uh, you can also do this in the SDF format or in the uh, mol 2 format. So once you upload it, uh, there are actually two methods for the docking to perform. There is one is the blind docking and another is the uh, selective docking. Now in the blind docking method, what actually do is you don't know when you don't know anything about the building nature of the, this particular target or your uh, ligand. Then you go for blind docking. Blind docking means you are totally relying on the uh, algorithm to find the perfect and particular binding site for your molecule. And the web server and the algorithm automatically it calculates the it actually scans the whole topology of your uh, of your uh, target and then it finds a spot where your molecule can actually go and move and bind to and it uh, deco also decodes the various uh, uh, poses of your molecule. It also turns around and uh, that discuss the poses right that is a selects the uh, different poses of your molecule and binds them to the whole protein and through which you can simply take a look and uh, check that whether that particular molecule is binding to and when you are uploading 10 ligands you are going to get uh, 10 docking sites which, which will show that where each molecule is going to bind right and uh, that's a blind docking part but uh, once you go out of this blind docking part you will get the binding site docking in the binding site docking, what you know, you already have the information about the binding site. Now, you can either generate uh, on the literature survey or suppose you have done some NMR experiment uh, with this, uh, with the free target and along with the uh, complex complex. Now, when you simply uh, do this both experiment the NMR, we do the perform the NMR spectroscopy, you already know the sites or the atoms uh, or the residues where your molecule is binding to. So, when you have those information, you are, you don't want to go for the uh, blind docking right then what you do you simply take the molecule and go and you select the residues that uh, in uh, in actual scenario the since the molecule is binding to your protein in those residues you, you know that this is the actual scenario to make it more realistic you simply uh, just enter the residue number and you make a restraint docking and you start the docking the docking is done usually by the autodoc autodoc vina, vina and you get the results uh, now in the other case you have the MPI open screen and this is actually the virtual screening software uh, and this virtual screen what it does is simply you, if you give one uh, you upload your protein and uh, you select almost uh, you can select almost 5000 ligands for a particular databases now there are several databases mentioned uh, within this web server or you can also upload your own ligand database that you have selected uh, or suppose you have built it or developed a various amount of uh, a huge number of uh, drug like molecule now you, do, you want to select that uh, your uh, your own developed molecule to part, find, find the lead uh, lead molecule so for that you can upload your own library and uh, if you don't have your own library there are generally the diverse library uh, database is present or you have the ippi library file which is already inbuilt into this particular web server you have just have to select the library and they are going to screen all the molecules that are actually present on that like uh, library one after another and uh, give you the uh, show you the result now of course you know when the molecule is try trying to uh, screen almost this um, huge amount of uh, um, uh, ligands obviously it is going to take some time right and that is the major drawback of virtual screen that it takes a lot of time and to reduce the time what it does is actually this virtual spinning they simply omit all the site water molecules they simply uh, neglect uh, they also contain sometimes cut off this uh, uh, sometimes that uh, a bond might form beyond four Armstrong also that that might be a very uh, rare case but it might form but what uh, to uh, hasten the calculation what the web server does is they have some specific cutoff point mentioned in them 
and if you simply increase the or decrease the cutoff suppose you want your molecule to bind to a very uh, to those residues which which shows a very uh, high affinity so you simply reduce the cutoff to 2 angstrom so that means your molecule it will only screen for the molecule which uh, which which is going to have a uh, bond with the residues uh, uh with a distance of only 2 amstrom not even 4 amstrom so in this way you can simply uh reduce uh, or reduce the calculation time you can simply identify a very highly specific molecule but uh, that also depends on your experimental condition because uh, people sometimes uh, it's not all residues there, there are not uh, not all the drugs are bonded at only 2 amstrom distance right some uh, some are there to find bind to a particular important residue and that residue might be a little far away from 2 amstrom so in that case uh, what happens that you miss those uh, uh, ligands that uh, shows those uh, those type of uh, screen uh, so whatever it might be so generally it takes a lot of time so after that you simply uh, run it and the virtual spinning is done along with the with the autodoc vena and generally uh, what happens after that you simply get to know uh, you can see the molecules um, and uh, you can simply um, click the molecule or the uh, that you want so this is the mti open stream server uh, so what you have this is the thing that i have already uh, discussed uh, you can uh, take a look here and uh, you can simply read this and there the um, all the algorithms are actually mentioned here how it actually calculates the, uh, this how they can actually perform the virtual screen what the type of algorithm that they have uh, where all things are actually mentioned here uh, so simply to run it it's really easy to run simply just click on this run mti autodoc and this particular thing will start and uh, once you have this screen you just have to select your ligand you have to it says this is the input data uh, so it says that uh, input your ligand simply just uh, uh, select the ligand format either small 2 or sdf and then you simply uh, upload your ligand and as you have your uh, pdb file uh, for the receptor also you can either upload the molecular pdb or uh, uh, ef field uh, in a small 2 format and simply click on run and if you as you click on run it is i have already uh, done did a perform the job and as you start it uh, the job progress report will simply show you what is the setting so it simply splits the ligand file setting up the grid uh, and preparing the ligand file so they, they do all this and after that you get the result as a result what you get it simply shows you the different poses okay now in this molecule uh, as sir was actually describing the uh, way to visualize the molecule the protein style is mentioned here you can select the ball and stick model the uh, cartoon model the line model the smooth stress anything uh, i generally prefer to view a molecule in the cartoon uh, cartoon format you can visualize the alpha helix beta sheet regions and you can understand in which domain that particular molecule is binding to so this also gives you a uh, you, you can also select the color and uh, the uh, ligand style uh, ligand will be ball and stick or it will be made of lines uh, the that's it, that's it and it shows you the different type of ligands that has actually bonded to this particular protein so in this case as i have selected as you can see that uh, when i have selected this uh, ligand uh, one it is actually bonding to this particular uh, uh, when i am selecting ligand 10 see the position and the uh, you have already changed and uh, as such the ligand 9 has also changed now it's up to you to visualize and find out the uh, what is the actual best thing that you are wanting or uh, if you can see that uh, particular uh, obviously we have something in mind right when we try to design a ligand and something we have to see that whether it is binding to an active near an active site or if it is if that particular binding has uh, can change the activity of that particular protein or it might suppress the protein but obviously those uh, you can go get those data after you uh, do the wet lab experiments but until then you have to select the best poses you can uh, if there is already literature, some uh, you can do the literature survey and if there is already mentioned that these are the sites which can which are really essential for bonding and if you find a ligand that can actually bond, bond to this particular thing and it shows a high interaction you select that particular molecule and you uh, move on from that uh, from that step so this is one of the mti open screen and after that you can simply download the molecule and you can also export them uh, in uh, various um, in the various file format those are already mentioned in the when you download them you are going to set and this is actually the uh, mti open screen and since i cannot show you because uh, the job has actually been not finished uh, it generally takes a lot of time it generally takes sometimes it takes 72 hours uh, to complete a particular job but the essence is actually same uh, what you simply have to upload your pdb you have up to upload the you have to select the library there is actually a mention of library you have to select the databases uh, just like the uh, here 
go and PDB. Then also there's option to select the uh, just uh, let me oh, you know. <clears throat> okay. So this is actually the uh, methods by we have to upload your protein receptor and then you can simply uh, upload them and after that you have to select the compound database. Now the database can be you can use your uh, various kind of databases filter like you have the database, the track library, the food library, the diverse library. You have various library. You can select the library that you want, and uh, it will select screen all the molecules that are from that particular uh, library. Now after that, uh, we have some compound library filters. Now do you know what are the filters? If you remember then, and if you simply check the values, if uh, you might remember that we have discussed each and every of those particular filters these filters are actually the filters that have been used in Hoche's rule and Lipinski rule to find out a drug like compound which shows you that if that particular molecule has high drug likeness or not these are the value and you can simply edit those value now if you remember that Hoche's rule they all had a range they all had a particular range right and uh, for example the log p value according to the Lipinski the log p value must be uh, must be less than so suppose now you are you are spinning the molecule now you have very short time so you don't want your uh, log p value to five you can simply reduce the log p value to one or two so that will be your cutoff so any molecule which has log p value one and two only those molecule will be selected from the whole library otherwise the library actually contains lakhs and lakhs and crores of molecules we don't need to see screens crores of molecule we only need the molecules which act actually fit to my expectation which actually fit to my experimental conditions which actually fit to my particular protein right and these are the compounds so you can simply uh, give the amount you can simply write the amount and and those uh, filter will be added and those will be actually used to perform the screening and then you simply click on run and it will start your uh, virtual screening program now obviously uh, this is not this virtual spin platform is not as good as the platform that is provided by uh, Schrodinger or the um, uh, 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 I forgot the name um, the studio one I think you remember the uh, mentioned that uh, the discovery studio uh, they already provide some uh, modules uh, they are not as good as them because of course, of course those are paid versions and a lot of investments are there to make that particular thing uh, uh, much more uh, acceptable uh, but nonetheless when you are using when you're in an academic field when you have some shortage of fund and then of course you can go for this MTI open screen because that's an excellent platform to start your learning and uh, if you can simply filter out a particular compound right you can even filter out a particular compound from this MTI open screen also because a lot of paper have acted this MTI open screen on their uh, in their uh, publications so it's not that uh, it's just a uh, it's just a useless uh, web server it's actually a good web server you have to use you have to know but it's an excellent starting point so apart from uh, those uh, Argus Lab and all, you can also uh, take a look at this okay, open screen too. Simply, if you have some uh, compounds, then you can readily uh, screen out those molecules. Okay, so uh, that's all about the MTI open screen and the virtual screen platform. Uh, because since the time is short, I'm going to uh, hop on to the next uh, module. That's the MD simulation. Now, of course, uh, if I need to talk about this virtual screen and this simulation, it is going to take around a week. To uh, make you all understand about, about the nitty gritty details of this uh, uh, particular thing, and because of course I actually, which I take, it of course uh, spans from, uh, uh, it actually takes a, it's a month long course, so you know that's a huge syllabus. But uh, those things are actually you can simply go and uh, there are also help topic available, so you can simply see the tutorial and uh, uh, use your own uh, imagination and use your own knowledge to simply, simply hover around and take a look at those things. Now, so uh, what? Uh, so the first thing is first. So what did you get? You have a target. So you perform those uh, target validation. Now you have your target. Then you once you have your target, yeah, you know that you are going to target this particular protein because this particular protein is associated with this particular disease. So now from that particular disease, we came to be shortened down to a particular protein, and from that particular protein, we perform the virtual screening, and now we found a one or two compounds that are showing excellent interaction with the particular protein with the desired result not all the interactions lead to your desired result suppose you need to uh, suppress the activity of a particular protein but not all the molecules that actually bind to your uh, that affinity uh, to your uh, particular protein can be an inhibitor to that protein right it might not be an inhibitor for the particular protein or enzyme so in that case you have to apart from that high binding affinity with a good thermodynamic parameters you also need to see the desired effect in your particular lead molecule 
so as you select so i have your lead molecule and it's binding to your you know that it's binding to your particular uh, protein but now you need to look deep you need to look at those uh, atomic details of those binding to those bonds in which 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 molecules or which uh, molecules are creating the hydrogen bond is the hydrogen bond the constant throughout the uh, whole lifespan of the protein or it is simply uh, changing is the after at uh, if the protein structure say if protein forms an another conformation at a different uh, chemical environment is the structure of the protein uh, preventing the molecule from binding to that particular residue to see all those to see the whole through the whole conformation of the protein we need to perform this molecular dynamic simulation and this particular md simulation is uh, is just an another approach for uh, the investigation of those atom location in space now in this approach a single point model is usually replaced by a dynamic model in which the whole nuclear system is forced into motion and the simulation of the motion is realized by the numerical solution of those classical newtonian dynamic equ equations and after and uh, when you whenever you have the set of possible atom locations and uh, those all give the conformational ensemble profile for a given molecule so this md can also provide an information on the thermodynamic and also on the dynamic property of your molecule and this can also be used for simulations of the protein shapes and also for refinement of the x-ray structures now the molecule uh, this uh, dynamics can be used to explore the conformational space and it is often uh, the method of choice for a very large molecule for example the proteins right because in md simulation the energy surface is generally explored by solving the newton's law of motion for the particular system right and uh, a very common strategy when searching for this conformational space is to perform the simulation at a very high and physically unrealistic temperature because this thing enhances the ability of the system to overcome the energy barrier because as a, as you know when the protein folds it's not the protein to reach a global minima it has to cross several local minima and it has to bump across some local maxima to reach the global minima it's like simply walking down a hill when you are whenever you are trying to walk down from suppose a mount everest to uh, to the base it's not that it's always you are coming down sometimes you have to overcome a obstacle you have to overcome a hill just to go so that you can go further down the same thing is followed on the, on the protein minimization and that's how the protein attains the uh, minimized and uh, uh, local structure right and uh, Uh, and this particular md simulation uh, can be performed using several program packages uh, uh, like uh, amber uh, the gromax the charm system even the schrodinger desmond system uh, helps you to perform the allows you to perform the md simulation and uh, uh, but the first md package that was amber and amber is actually short for the uh, assisted module building with energy refinement and uh, uh, it was uh, first uh, uh, developed for refining only the nmr structures okay and later on uh, people over time people tried to design uh, various codes they wrote some codes the physicists and the biophysicists they wrote the codes to simply uh, perform those simulations and uh, and uh, later on it uh, developed as a whole md program package and the name actually amber actually refers to both the force field for simulation of biomolecules and of course support the uh, the md program package also okay so uh, this md simulation through this md simulation you can perform by various kind of uh, work right and uh, um, uh, and particularly the goal of this uh, the today my goal will be to just give you the overview of this whole theoretical foundation of this uh, uh, amber uh, amber and uh, to uh, give you a provide several specific applications uh, within the framework of this amber program okay and uh, Uh, so as uh, sir was saying that uh, amber is the perfect and the most uh, uh, better thing to perform this uh, simulations and uh, the reason for that is first of all the amber is actually freely available and secondly the force field that are used in amber those are actually generally updated they are gradually generally updated by various scientists and physicists and as a result you can simply use those uh, amber force field to run any type of molecule be it a dna be it a protein be it a um, carbohydrate for example if you if you are using the if a protein is be force field then that particular force field is actually uh, carries uh, contains uh, and uh, has the um, 
overall knowledge of of uh, of both the dna rna and also of the protein but in case of schrodinger there is a if you if you are using opls 3 force field then of course that force field is meant only for protein so if you are uh, if you are using a dna molecule uh, use uh, in that uh, Schrodinger, uh, Schrodinger program, and you are using the OPLS three force field. Then uh, I think that that might that might not lead to any problem, but that's not accurate because you are not using the uh, properties of DNAs because those properties of DNAs are not fed into that particular uh, algorithm of the particular force field, right? Uh, now. <clears throat> Now, molecular dynamic simulation actually generates information at the microscopic level, and that includes the atomic position and velocities. And the conversion of this microscopic information to macroscopic observable uh, uh, entities like uh, pressure, energy, heat, heat capacity, the Gibbs free energy, uh, they all require some statistical mechanics. And this statistical mechanics is thus the fundamental to the uh, study of this biological system by uh, uh, MD simulation. So gradually, the MD simulation. What happens? It's not like that. The whole protein system is actually uh, outrightly. Uh, when you are running a simulation, it does not mean that the protein is simply uh, moving apart. It's simply unfolding and folding. No, that not not that of course. The protein only moves like the atoms. These are the actual the atoms. So what happens when the ligand is binding? There is very subtle movement of the various other uh, in the various other organism, uh, not organism, various other uh, atoms in the whole protein structure. And those subtle differences are actually calculated and measured for each of the atom. And since it is calculated for each atom at each space at each time point, this is so much of time-consuming job. So much time consuming because uh, your computer has to calculate all those things and then have to sum it up and then present you as an average, right? And that takes a huge amount of time and computational power. So that's why you uh, you cannot run this Amber or GoMax or Charm package in your usual computer or desktop. You need a separate workstation. You need a separate uh, computation platform. You need a cloud computing system or some computer system to simply access those servers because this is such a highly computation demanding job that your own laptop or normal laptop and uh, desktop fails to run this uh, program. So you need a and moreover, this uh, these things only run on the Linux platform. So and generally uh, we all use the Windows based platform, right? And so this Windows based platform is not actually uh, acceptable uh, by this uh, system. So you have to have a Linux based system, and you have to know some codes to run these things. You have to have some idea about the uh, various commands, uh, um, the Python and other programs. You have to you you need to know about those, right? Uh, you have to know the C codes and uh, all all those things. Now, uh, so I'm going to give you a overview of this Amber. So uh, this Amber is uh, not a single program, uh, but uh, it is rather a collection of all the codes that are actually designed to work together. And the principal flow of information is generally shown in this picture. You can see here, and uh, there are three main steps. Okay, and uh, uh, shown from the top to bottom in this figure. So first one is the system preparation, and then you have the simulation, and then you have the trajectory analysis. Now, encoding this operation in all the separate programs has obviously some important advantage. The first advantage is that it allows the individual pieces to be upgraded or replaced with minimal impact impact on the other program suits, right? And this has actually happened several times. The people sometimes they found that uh, suppose if I'm working with antichamber and if I'm working with leap, I'm going to discuss these things. So uh, what happens is they uh, they say to upgrade the leap, uh, you don't have to uh, take a look on those PDBs. You don't you have to don't, you don't have to upgrade the antichamber method. Uh, that's, it, it's a, it's a separate program. So uh, you do your and uh, to run a but suppose you want to answer a particular question, a specific question. Uh, as a researcher, you want to find out the answer to a particular question, and that particular question has not been previously addressed by anyone. So the whole program and the, uh, the algorithm has not been developed to answer that particular question. The beauty of this program is that you can simply collaborate with someone, and you can yourself, you are, if you are a physicist and all, you can yourself develop this particular code to answer your particular question. That's the beauty that you can write your own commands. You don't have to depend on the other to write the, to write the command. If it's a question that needs to be addressed, you are going to find someone who can uh, either who can do the job for you, or if you are yourself uh, well versed with uh, developing the algorithms and uh, uh, the setting up the whole benchmark, then uh, the benchmark, then of course uh, you can go through this. Uh, uh, you can do it on your own. 
Uh, and, uh, and the second thing is, second best thing about this uh, is that uh, it also allows different programs uh, and uh, to be written with different coding practices. For example, this leap. This leap is actually written in C and uh, using the uh, X Windows library. Uh, while uh, the uh, PT Raj and the Anti Chamber, these are all the text based C codes. Uh, the MMPBSA, right, uh, that have been uh, actually implemented in the Perl application, by the Perl application. And uh, the main simulation programs. The main simulation program when you run the production run that are actually coded in the Fortran uh, method. So, so that's why if you are well versed with a simple program, you don't have to learn other uh, languages. You can simply write the uh, code and write the algorithm and develop the whole program and the simulation type uh, using your uh, own merit and using your own um, coding practices. And uh, and uh, the third thing is that this uh, also um, very easy is the porting to a new computing platform. And only because the only the principal simulation codes and this principal simulation code is generally run by uh, Sander and PMEMD and uh, because these are only needed to be coded for parallel operation or uh, they need to know about those uh, optimized libraries, right? Uh, so typically this preparation and analysis programs are carried out on the local machine uh, using a user's desktop. Uh, Whereas this time consuming uh, simulation tasks, they are generally sent to a batch system or to a remote machine, which have a very stable and well defined file formats for these interfaces. And it simply facilitates this mode of operation. So you can have your laptop and the free form running those particular commands because generally they take time. So you are not, uh, obviously, you have some more things to do, analyze the data. And uh, if you want to buy information, then your laptop is your tool, right? So you don't want to let the laptop run the program only for three days. So that's a very good thing. And uh, uh, and uh, so that's uh, that's the beauty about this particular uh, uh, amber. But uh, obviously, like anything, there are also certain disadvantages in the uh, this particular uh, code fragmentation, right? And uh, that is because there is generally no consistent user user interface for the various components, and that makes it much more difficult to learn. Because if you are a learner, then of course or if you are to learn the antechamber, then of course the 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 command, the uh, the uh, question, the commands that you are using, it's completely different that you ran in the sander. So that's why you have to learn many things at a time if you are a first hand learner. So that's that's a, a little bit of different. And uh, of course, there is uh, also no easy way to code in one section and uh, uh, to modify the result of another section. For example, uh, uh, let's take example of the atom types or charges, right? And these atom types and charges are generally established in the in this particular preparation phase. Okay, but these cannot be modified as the simulation proceeds, and it it's just this particular sander mode because in this case the sim the particular in the, the sim simulation cannot decide that uh, which trajectory data to archive based on the sort of analysis to be done because it does not have any information about this trajectory analysis but despite all these limitations that uh, uh, breaking up of those cores into distinct pieces has generally served uh, the user and developer community very well uh, so <coughs> Uh, that's one thing. So uh, let's uh, now, as I mentioned, back to run the Amber, you have to have the RAM Linux system. But uh, since we don't have that, I'm going to show you how just a basic thing about this Amber using the Chimera. Okay. So in this particular Chimera, I've already docked a particular molecule. That's the Ivermectin molecule. The Ivermectin molecule is one of the molecules that has been found to, uh, that has been developed against the coronavirus main protease. It's the main protease, right? So I've docked this Ivermectin against this uh, coronavirus main protease. Now, uh, to run the simulation, this uh, Chimera, now this Chimera, uh, this Chimera is actually a molecular visualization tool, just like the Argus Lab, this Chimera, uh, there's also Pymol. Uh, but the beauty of Chimera is that uh, the, through Chimera, uh, you can perform the simulation on your laptop. But obviously, provided your laptop has that huge amount of resource to run the whole calculation. Otherwise, obviously, it's futile to run because laptop, laptop will get hanged and whatnot. But nonetheless, uh, this is a uh, beautiful thing to learn about this particular Amber whenever you have, you have the Chimera uh, software. So this is a freely downloaded uh, downloadable software. We can simply download the Chimera from the uh, type in Chimera and you can download the Chimera from the Google. It's freely available and it's open source. So you can even, even my, uh, if you are a physicist, if you are a coder, then you can simply code and uh, uh, change something in the Chimera also. Uh, now what I have done is I have uploaded this particular uh, doc structure of this molecule. 
uh, using the I have got this um, ivermectin molecule to this main protease. Now I am to run the simulation, and I'm just going to give you a basic idea. I'm not going to run the simulation because obviously it takes a lot of time. I'm going to give you a basic idea about how the simulation uh, procedure generally works. What is the general workflow, and how can you proceed? Uh, of course, you need an expert uh, to understand each of this method and uh, why uh, information that can be sorted out from each of these particular steps. But nonetheless, you are going to have a uh, you are going to learn how to do this. Yeah, any software there are tools present here. First, in this file section, you can open the file. You can open a particular molecule. You can save this particular molecule as PDB, MOL2, and whatnot. You can always, of course, save the image of this particular molecule in the image. If you simply click on save image, you can simply save the image of this particular thing to be published in your manuscript and all. Also, then you have the select mode, and with this select mode, I can select any chain. So, for for example, I have selected click on A. I have selected and I have clicked on. DNA and then selected A. When I've clicked on it, has see it has selected this particular protein because it's made up of only a single chain. But it has uh, it has not selected this particular moiety because this is a small molecule and it does not have that. Uh, it's not mentioned as the chain. A. But now to select this particular residue, you can also go to this residue and simply under the amino acid category, you can see there is a molecule uh, unknown entity called ANC. ANC means unknown. I've named it as unknown. So if you select this, click on unknown. See now the molecule is selected and the whole protein is rested. But uh, what can I do about selecting this molecule? Suppose you want to delete this particular molecule. You have selected this molecule. Now simply go to action and then uh, wait, uh, go to action. So the atoms bonds and simply click on delete. If you click on delete, the more particular thing will be deleted. So like this, suppose you, uh, suppose sometimes you are going to if you are going to get a particular PDB uh, download a particular PDB protein structure from a PDB file, then sometimes the those PDB molecules comes with some uh, they come in a uh, homo they either they come in a polymeric state. So sometimes you need to select if you need to select a particular only a one chain of the particular molecule, you can simply download the molecule, select the other chains and delete them, and uh, keeping only the molecular entity that you require. So after that, there are other methods. Uh, Using this camera, you can perform various kind of thing. I'm only going to show you how to perform the MD simulation. Okay. So first things first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first uh, go to the tools, and the under tools is an option called MD ensemble analysis. Okay. So under MD ensemble analysis, there's an option called molecular dynamic simulation. So I've clicked on it. So once you click on it, another window will open. It is going to show you first. It is going to show you the model that what you have to select. And after that, first is a prep, uh, prep structure. This is used to prepare the whole structure, uh, the, the structure of small molecule and the structure of protein for your uh, MD simulation. I'm just uh, going out just to see if I am connected or not. Okay, I'm connected. That's because of the issues that I had last day. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now next, now the next thing that whenever you perform the MD simulation. Where are we going to perform the MD simulation? Where is my molecule present now? Now, generally, now if you see my screen, the molecule is present in front of a black background. That means the background has no nothing. Means it is in vacuum. But you can perform your simulation in vacuum also. But do our proteins and small molecules are are my uh, proteins and molecules present in vacuum in my system? No. They are present surround with the. They are surrounded by water molecules, right? They are present in my body, not in a vacuum state. So that's why first, before performing the simulation, we need to solve it these structures. We need to solve it these structures. So under solvation, see there is an option called solvation. There is an under option solvation. You have to simply enter the box sizes. The water box. This is the water box size. What happens? I'm going to show you. Just wait and click on Start Solvent Tool. Now this Start Solvent Tool, it will simply solve it your whole molecule with waters. Now not only with water. With what? Now what? First method is the what is the solvent method? Is it box, cap, octagon, or shell? We want to select the box, and then the solvent model. What type of model are you using? If you simply click on the solvent model, you are going to see the chloroform box, the methanol box. Many box, SPC box, tip 3P, tip 3F, PF, tip 4PA. All this. We are going to see the tip 3P box because tip 3P box is the most advanced, most updated water box system present till now. Suppose you want to simulate only your small molecule, only your organic molecule, or your inorganic, not organic, only your inorganic molecule. Now, in that case, 
suppose your molecule is dissolved in chloroform now if your molecule gets dissolved in chloroform it's a hydro uh, and not in water then i'm not going to select the tip 3p box then i'm going to select the chloroform box or if the solvent system is methanol then methanol box now this tip 3p box actually contains all the information that is uh, about uh, that have been dug out about the particular water molecules present in our bodies what type of interaction can our water molecule form what type of uh, hydrogen bond does the water molecule form inside our body what type of uh, apart from water molecules what are the different type of uh, hydrophobic interaction not hydrophobic the random interaction what kind of interaction all the interaction that are that are possible with the water molecule with the uh, uh, with this protein and all this information is fed into this tip 3p box so i have selected the tip 3p box and naming my box size as 10 and i have clicked on okay as you click on it it is uh, if you select uh, see the uh, see here it is saying that solvent is bad. and now the box the whole molecule is solvated that means the whole molecule is now under the water box okay it's under the, the it will be simulated now this particle this water box will simply mimic our cell it will mimic the cellular environment it will simply mimic how our system looks like or how are the particular system feels like uh, now how the protein feels like when it is in our body that's the system or the environment that this particular water box provide so my water box is under this uh, molecules are under this water box so that's done okay now after that you also have to start add ions tool the add ions tool also simply add is, adds ion because sometimes so what happens the molecule that you get uh, that are, that they are sometimes in a uh, positively charged or negatively charged state now generally we add the counter ions or if you have a molecule which is generally positively charged then you need to keep your environment in a positively charge because sometimes suppose you are taking a look at a particular enzyme that is present in the gastric uh, in your uh, stomach now of course in your stomach the ph is going to uh, differ now of course if the ph is going to differ what i'm how can i differ the ph i can simply use the start add ions tool to add the ions to make to mimic so that the water box now mimics as a gastric juice okay so that's the way now you can also add these ions to simply counteract the uh, charges against that your protein have and uh, after that and then you have this constraint etc now what this constraint is means uh, sometimes uh, what happens is we generally perform the nmr experiment right to find out the interacting sites to find out where it is interacting and how it is interacting we sometimes uh, uh, we perform the nmr experiment or we perform the other experiment now from the other experiment sometimes you are going to find that there are certain other uh, uh, energies uh, or other constraints that you can simply uh, uh, deploy on this particular structure and those are the constraints for example in the force field option you have the lunar linear juice interaction mod method so this is a cut off method when i say when i select default that means it is going to automatically uh, default it is going to calculate all the interactions that is possible within a default limit but suppose i have selected this and i have selected this on the cut off the cut off and i have given a cut off of 4 armstrong that means it is only going to calculate all the uh, electrostatic interaction that, that a particular atom can have within its 4 armstrong diameter not more than that by giving this cut off we can simply reduce the computational time and apart from that you can also select the uh, evolved method suppose you want to uh, calculate this electrostatic interaction using evolved method then of course select the evolved method and uh, it is going to calculate the electrostatic interaction using the evolved method that it has and uh, uh, same thing goes for the linear jones interaction potential also you know the linear jones potential they also has a particular cut off uh, now it can be calculated up to 8, 8 Armstrong at 10 Armstrong. But if doing that, of course, as the interaction distance between them increases, the forces get reduced, but it does not become zero, right? The interaction does not become zero. As the force increases, the distance increases. Of course, the force get uh, nullified, but it never reaches a zero. Of course, after a certain distance, it will, it will reach zero, but uh, it's not an abrupt zero. So that's why if you simply uh, keep them as, uh, if you simply keep it, keep it at default, it is going to calculate all just interaction about this particular atom as with all the other atoms so it's better to give a cut off you can put in two amps from or four amps from something like that and uh, usually whatever you put it will uh, it will uh, it will be after that you move to the run parameters and under the settings there are actually three methods minimization equilibration and production now what is minimization now the protein structure that is actually that you receive 
from the extract crystallographic structure and where i am getting the protein i am downloading the protein from the pdb sites and the pdb site have uh, this uh, proteins um, those the structure of the, whose are generally so, um, uh, solved by uh, nmr spectroscopy or uh, extra crystal mostly extra crystallography because if you want a high resolution structure of course you have to go for the extra crystallographic structure the nmr crystal nmr structure of course is better but it's not that much greatly uh, is not highly resolved as uh, as like extra crystallographic structure so but whenever the structure that you are uh, downloading that is a extra crystallographic structure and you know that in x ray the proteins are actually made static they are actually crystal crystal and made static but you don't know whether that particular conformation of the protein attained is attained after having the minimized state has the protein reached its global minima because until and unless the protein reaches its global minima it is going to change its conformation right it is going to change its conformation until and unless it reaches the global minima but we don't know if that particular protein we have if that particular protein has reached its global minima we don't know it so to make sure we run the minimization step in the minimization step what we happen we simply heat up the system we run the system so that the uh, protein some, uh, sometimes it runs and attains the global minima it actually calculates the whole global minima of the protein and it allows the protein to reach the global minima so that you can you have that particular conformation of the protein which is the least bound to change it structure and then perform the simulation now there are various method for the, the for each one is the one of is the steepest descent method uh, after that uh, you set up those value generally the values are kept at default you need not change the values so keep it at default and then simply click on run once you click on run it is it is going to start the minimization but of course I might warn you in my computer it will get hanged because i don't have the sufficient resource to run this Uh, software also uh, so it's better if you run it might take it it might take uh, 24 hours it might take 48 hours it might take 72 hours depends on the uh, resource that your uh, computer or your laptop is preparing uh, to run this particular thing and how fast your laptop is and so after that you have you have this equilibration and this production run and those are also the same thing you have you give them there are some default after minimization you have to run the equilibration and after equilibration you have to run the production in the production the actual simulation occurs so after that uh, you simply click on run and then you are going to get the particular structure okay and uh, so that's how you can run this uh, whole uh, amber uh, thing using this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, timer or the, in amber we also perform the same thing in amber package what we have is we also perform the minimization then uh, the equilibration and the heating of the system then uh, we uh, Uh, we calculate the production run but we do that those but we have a separate system for our uh, to run the amber and those are generally the work station that are present in the institutes and uh, those are high computing system power so they can run the um, smoothly but generally in, in my uh, in those work station also generally takes 2 to 3 days uh, to complete a 100 nanosecond simulation it also depends on the size of your protein if the protein size is huge then of course it will take much much more time uh, but if the protein size is really uh, is small if it's in insulin then generally the insulin takes uh, around uh, it takes around uh, 60 to 70 hours to complete so nearly you can say that it takes 3 days for insulin molecule or molecule uh, with uh, 200 or 300 amino acid to finish up the simulation and uh, but of course those are in a linux platform and uh, the whole system actually that uh, you are running it actually occurs you run the whole system in the gas forskill or in the amber forskill uh, that is f14 as we that's the most uh, latest and advanced forskill uh, that is there for the protein and uh, uh, the dna rna and any other biomolecules or uh, biomolecules you can also run the carbohydrate system from here so that's ab about the amber program and how you can run the whole uh, simulation thing okay So now I'm going to start with this uh, homology model. <clears throat> now you know that you have the structure. Once you have the structure, it's really easy to do all those things that I've shown you. Not not easy because sometimes you obviously if you do these things, one day you are going to see there is no error. But the second day, when the job is really important, you are going to find it error because obviously whenever you have to finish a work quickly, the nature tries. to simply disrupt you right it does not help you and there is actually a theory behind this not a theory this is a uh, there is a scientist i do name this particular thing i do i do i know remember it but actually happens <clears throat> but what to do when you don't have a structure when to when you don't have a structure of a particular protein it's not available anywhere and 
no one can simply and crystallizing up protein is also takes expertise and it's a very tough job you fail to uh, have your uh, structure ready then what to do then we have to go for the modeling now this modeling can be part there are various kind of modeling available one is the ab initio modeling and there is the homology modeling in the ab initio modeling what we do we start the modeling from scratch right so from scratch means you only have the information about the and you only have the amino acid sequence information and you start from there and uh, uh, and why it is important why the structure information is important it is because this uh, uh, this structural information is always of great assistance in the study of this protein function dynamics interaction with other ligands and with other proteins and all but once we have the low resolution structure that is provided by this homology modeling it contains sufficient information about the spatial arrangement of all the important residues and it may guide the design of new experiments such as the site directed mutagenesis and it could, could even be used in ligand docking and also for uh, designing new ligands and inhibitors uh, in the structure based drug designing right now the term homology modeling is also called as comparative modeling or a template based uh, based modeling and uh, it actually refers to modeling a 3d structure of a protein using a known experimental structure of a homologous protein and that homologous protein is used as a template now how can you find homology and the question is how can you know uh, how can you find the homology to find the homology you have to do a sequential analysis we have to sequence the whole protein and find out the sequence similarity with with its other proteins if you have a known homolog the job is really easy if you already have a known homolog whose structure has been solved for example glucokinase and hexokinase right if you would not solve the structure of glucokinase with the structure of hexokinase present there so all you have to do is check take a look at the structure of the glucokinase and voila you can now simply structure group and because those are homologous protein and having a homologous structure is really easy right and that's why you can do it now this structure information uh, uh, as i have said that uh, this, this is basically needed for structural based drug designing and so even if you don't have those uh, structure you can take a look at the pdb you have to take a look at the pdb and look for the homologous proteins whose structure has been solved and using that as a template we are going to build up the structure of this particular molecule now this particular thing differs from the ab initio modeling in that that in ab initio modeling you don't find the uh, you don't find the homologous protein in that case what you do you only have the information about the amino acid sequence and that's all the information you require what it will do it will search for the whole pdb and it will know the and there are, you know that each amino acid have certain properties for example the amino acid malic malic means methionine alanine leucine uh, L E K. Um, e means uh, aspartic acid and the lysine. These, whenever the when it, whichever domain is rich in rich in this uh, malic in this uh, malic amino acid, they are going to form a alpha helix structure. Right? Whichever domain is rich in this particular amino acid, they are going to form the alpha helix structure. So, ab initio modeling is based on the chemical property of the particular amino acid sequence. So, but whenever there is some proline and uh, glycine, what will happen? Proline and glycine are generally a helix breaker. Right? They are also beta sheet breaker. They induce the turns and all. So whenever there is something, uh, some two glycine or there is glycine glycine present or glycine proline is present in between such a structure, the structure, the algorithm at automatically calculates that and turns that uh, since they are present there, it is not going to form a complete helix. So it's going to break the helix there because they are helix breaker, right? And so it's going to form a turn. But suppose there is a single glycine and it's surrounded by all the malic acid uh, that which is rich really, uh, really in this all uh, malic malic, right? Is there is a uh, uh, all the neighboring atoms are malic. So what will happen then? Then of course in that case the glycine will not will fail to break the helix because it's only a single. It just does not have the power to break that uh, that much of long helix. So that's where the ab initio modeling actually takes place. Okay, so. <clears throat> uh now so best method we know that uh, this experimental elucidation of this uh, protein structure may often be delayed by very difficulties in obtaining this sufficient amount of material like right? and for example the cloning we have to do the expression cloning you have to purify purify of almost milligram quantity of protein and that's a really hard and that's why 
uh, this particular homology of modeling actually provides the most reliable results. Okay, now, now a general thing what happens is uh, now this uh, modified uh, this modeling software they usually uses their own sequence alignment, and of course we need to verify all of them against our own alignment to make sure that there are no substantial differences because there is no better tool to identify errors as human eyes human eyes are the best thing to identify the errors right so obviously whatever you might depend on all the softwares you might depend on anything but you have to at least cross check it with your own eyes because if there are if the computer can might, might miss those errors but it's really hard to uh, if you are keen on finding an error of course you are going to find it through your naked eyes and that's why you, you need to cross check everything now now this whole modeling process it actually includes the backbone generation the um, building of the missing parts and usually the loops are missed right the loops are generally missed because uh, the loops are so much flexible and they uh, even in nmr suppose you are doing nmr the loops are so flexible that it's very hard to uh, gather the position of each of those uh, uh, each of those um, atoms that are present in the loops and as a result usually those are missed so uh, and you also have the ability to generate the side chains for each of those residue that are present in the different model and finally optimize this new residue side chain conformations and subsequently you have to energy minimize the whole and entire model right and after it is done the server outputs and uh, assessment of this model quality and then you have to carefully examine each of those model quality to found, find out the, the model that might be closest to the nature. So until and unless a particular structure has been uh, structure is solved, the homology model, your own developed homology model structure will serve as the best model that you have till now. But su suppose in near future someone uh, developed the structure, you know, someone solved the structure of the particular protein, then of course in that case, your structure will not be a model structure. You have to use your all the experiments using that particular solved structure. But until unless there is solved structure, the homology model is the best structure that one has, and people are going to use your own structure that you have developed. So now this uh, homology modeling actually it relies on the identification of uh, one or more known protein structure, which is likely to resemble the structure of the query sequence, right? And on production of those alignments that might map each residue in the query sequence to residue in the template sequence, right? And it has been shown that the protein structures are much more conserved than the protein sequence among the homolog, right? But sequences which fall below a 20% sequence identity, they can have very different structure. Now, there are certain errors that also crops up in this, this homology modeling. And the two most common and large scale errors in this homology modeling are the poor template selection and inaccuracy in the target template sequence alignment. These are the major error that might give rise to a uh, falsified uh, structure. Now, controlling these two factors by using a structure alignment or a sequence alignment uh, uh, that is produced on the basis of this comparing two solved structures, and that dramatically reduces the errors in the final model. And this gold standard alignment can be used as input to this current modeling method to produce a uh, accurate reproduction of this uh, original experimental structure, right? And this uh, now this alignment error may also be minimized by using uh, by multiple alignment, even if uh, only one template is used. And by the iterative refinement of those local regions of the low similarity, they are going to show you the structure of those low similar. Uh, low similarity uh, domain, right? You are going to get an idea about this, uh, even about the similarity domain, which have very low similarity, that how it might look like. But of course, uh, the rotamary states of the side chain and their internal packing arrangement, they actually present very difficulties in this homology model. Uh, uh, even in targets for which uh, uh, the backbone structure is relatively easy to predict. Okay, uh, and this is uh, partly due to the uh, fact that uh, many side chains in crystal structures are not in their optimal rotamatic state as a result of those energetic factors in the hydrophobic core and in the packing of those individual molecules in the uh, protein crystal. Now, one method of addressing this problem, it requires a searching, uh, searching a rotamatic library 
to identify those locally low energy combination of uh, packed state and uh, it has been suggested that uh, a major reason uh, reason that this homology modeling is so difficult when uh, the target temperature sequence is below 30% is that such proteins they have broadly similar fold but widely divergent side chain packing arrangement that's what actually leads to those difficulties so this one software this uh, robeta and uh, as i mentioned that uh, this homology modeling uh, it causes this uh, homology modeling uh, it's also known as competitive modeling right and um, it's actually based on the biological fact that when two sequences share high similarity their respective structures also similar so that's the qsr uh, basic mode of qsr right and the Rosetta, Robeta is actually a uh, protein. This is a, a protein structure prediction server that is uh, that has been developed by the Baker Lab, and that provides a very uh, unique experience of doing the homology modeling, and they, they provide a more or less uh, a very good structure, uh, perfect structure. So let's take a look at this Robeta. So this, uh, this is a this is a Robeta server. Simply uh, typing in Robeta in Google will do. You are going to get a, but you have to register first. You have to register first. You have to give in your name, ID. Uh, since you are, and now since these things are actually provided to the academic institutes for free, uh, you have to have a valid institutional email ID. If you don't have a valid institutional email ID, I think that will be really hard to uh, for you to register because uh, generally they, they, these are actually they have to be maintained and they have to be uh, updated in a regular interval, right? And uh, that's why there are some people who are really uh, sitting there and uh, in these things, and they, now they need to be fed, right? And that's why the industries they, they have huge money they have huge money so if they are intent to using the server they have to pay some money or some other uh, factors who are not which are not academic but uh, for academic institutes it's free to use and it's pretty really pretty easy to upload a structure first you have to give you a protein name simply just type in the protein name that you have and you have to upload the protein sequence now generally the protein sequence you can upload any sequence or you can upload the faster sequence and uh, you know that you can uh, uh, you can have your protein sequence name uh, present there uh, you can gather your protein sequence from the FASTA because mostly the protein sequences have been uh, uh, sequenced. All the proteins are mostly sequenced. So even if you have a you found a protein, you can simply perform the LCMS MS experiment and uh, uh, find out the whole sequence of your particular protein, right? And that's really relatively easy to do. So if you come across a new protein, you have a new protein, you have to simply go to the uh, mass spectroscopy. We have to do the LCMS MS, and that's it. That's why you are going to get the whole uh, sequence of your protein, and uh, you can upload those sequences to. And check up uh, how that it looks like. Now, other uh, there are the three models to so how to predict the model. The first one is the TRL. This now uh, this section is actually uses the TRL set, and this is a very deep learning uh, based uh, modeling method that is typically faster and most accurate, and uh, particularly for medium to hard targets. So, if you know that you have some homologous protein that is available on the uh, PDB side. Uh, you have some whole host protein that is available on the PDB side to structure have been solved. Then obviously you are going to click on this CM only. CM is the comparative modeling technology. Now this comparative modeling technology, what it does, it simply takes a look at those homologous protein that is present in the RCZ PDB. It takes a look at those structure and it uses the your uh, aligns them and it identifies the homologous region and it, and it allows the same fold to those homologous region. And uh, if uh, the region which are which are different, it uh, performs the ab initio uh, modeling, or it take a look at the, all the other. Uh, it uses other proteins as a model to uh, to find out if those proteins have those similar uh, amino acid sequence. And if those similar uh, similar amino acid sequence is present, then what is the fold of or pattern of folding of that particular sequence? And it simply assigns that particular model here. And after that, you have to simply, or uh, you can simply, uh, if you have your uh, homologous protein ready, you have your template ready, you can simply upload the template and you can simply ask the software to simply model the structure using the template that you have provided. As I've mentioned, that human eye is the best thing, so I think you have you, are, you must uh, check the template first. So, to check the template first, obviously, you know the which, the, which should be the best template for your. Um, Protein and you should upload that template. You, you should upload that template. Okay. Uh, so after you upload the template, you have to uh, the most uh, hardest thing is there uh, to do, and that's the to solve this particular thing. P plus two. This is the most hard thing to do because uh, literally sometimes you know I simply upload everything, but uh, uh, I just simply type in anything and they say they say it's wrong, and I'm like, how can C plus two be wrong? It's, it's the most easiest thing, but I find it really, I, I don't know. Whenever I type 5, it says that no, it's not done. You are error. It shows a newer calculation. But the second time, it's, it gets done. So I don't know what happens. Uh, so uh, that's how if you simply uh, you submit it and you click on submit, 
they are going to take it and they are going to send you a mail which will contain all the result file and then you can simply take a look at those, uh, those results and uh, uh, there is one thing I have already is, uh, modeled a particular thing using this particular server and uh, I'm going to show you the result how they will differ. This is actually a part of a nucleolin protein uh, that I have uh, part that I have modeled uh, just to show you that uh, the differences. So it is going to show you various kinds and you have to find out the perfect result. So these are the folds that it shows. So in the first thing that you see, it, it shows this kind of fold. In the second thing, it shows this kind of fold. In the third, it shows this kind of fold. So according to it uh, shows you this uh, three type of folds and now it depends upon you to select. Uh, it also gives you the result. Okay, yeah, you have to analyze the result and you have to see uh, which might be your uh, favorite structure, which might be the structure for your protein and uh, you have to select that particular structure and uh, move forward from here. Now that's why you have, uh, but of course to analyze the structure you have to, you need to know a lot more about that particular protein, right? You must do some other experiments to simply verify that uh, the model, the, the homology model that you have is a perfect structure or uh, that's a near perfect structure because then the uh, for there you can have you can have you can do same. there are several such experiments are there that you can uh, further do to some see validate this uh, data okay so that's how you can do perform this uh, homology modeling and uh, uh, that's a better thing but there's one thing that you should know that this uh, robeta what it does uh, as I've told you that what they do is they simply upload the sequence and they simply align the sequence but how do they align the sequence? How do they align the sequence? How can you align the sequence? As I have told you, that you have to manually check the alignment, and you can uh, so that you can go back. How can you manually check the alignment? Now, Our software is there that you can use simply to align the proteins and to uh, check whether uh, this particular uh, which is the best fit and one. And apart from that, there is also another software. Which this cluster W is actually a web server to simply align. It's used for a multiple alignment. Okay, so what you have is uh, this particular using this particular cluster W can simply put in uh, all the all the sequence of your proteins one after another in a faster format. And after you upload those sequence, it is going to execute the alignment and it's going to show you the result to tell you which is the best aligned structure. So first, uh, do this. I have already selected a bunch of hexokinase. Uh, this is a hexokinase protein and I have selected a hexokinase protein from various kind of species starting from a, a, a potato to tomato to human, mouse, rat, chimpanzee and all. Selected the pro same protein to show you how they can be aligned together. It's the same protein hexokinase and how can they be aligned together was the result. So what you do, the output format must be a cluster. Keep it cluster and first you have to say, uh, select the type of sequence that you are testing. That is the protein sequence or DNA sequence. Then you have to paste it in FASTA format. There are various other kinds of format that you can paste it into. Generally, the Swiss prod structure, the cluster W structure, but the FASTA format is the most easiest structure that is available and uh, that can be, um, what should I say, that, uh, that is uh, much more easier to work with the FASTA format. So after you simply put them in, we have to, uh, there are some detailed parameters that you have to input, like the gap penalties and all. I'm not going to go into detail and discuss the gap penalty, gap extension penalty because that's going to itself take another class to discuss. So just uh, I'm going to say that uh, whatever the value, just keep them. Uh, now the gap open penalty is that gap penalties are something now like this. Uh, you have negative marking uh, when you do the MCQ questions, right? You have some negative marking. That means whenever you answer an answer wrong, there is a minus 0.25 is deducted from your percentage. The same thing happens for this alignment also. Whenever there are some gaps in the alignment, suppose now this Generally, why do our sequence differ? Why do our sequence differ between species to species? It's because there are random mutations. Now, these mutations might, might lead, might uh, uh, might start from the point mutation. It might go to the addition, substitution, uh, deletion, anything. Now, whenever there are majorly additions and deletions, what happens? There is a huge chunk of gaps get uh, is present in the gets inserted into the sequence. If it's a if it's an insertion, then of course the gap will be present on the corresponding other species. If it's a deletion, then the gap is present in your species, in your in your DNA, right? Now, so whenever such gaps happen, they simply deduct a mark for those gaps because that means that particular species is very different. You are showing no similarity to me, and that's how uh, that's why those gaps are there and. Uh, 
So uh, after that, you simply click on execute multiple alignment. And that's it. It's going to show you the alignment. So see what I've done. I have provided the sequence. One is for human. Hexokine is human. It's of 917 amino acid. Second, I have hexokine is for rat, which is 918 amino acid. Then I have hexokine is for mouse, which is 974. Yes, rat and mouse are different. I'm really fed up of telling people. Yes, rat and mouse are completely different thing. They are different species. Now I have also used this yeast and the bovine and there's a tuber sum that is the potato one okay and this one is actually the chimpanzee uh shim which belongs to a chimpanzee so i've used this uh different hexokinase and uh <clears throat> and i've aligned them now when you align them it, uh, it says that the one and two that means the human and rat they share a homology of almost 92 percent uh, the rat, the human and mouse, they share a homology of a uh, uh, similarity of 90%. The homo human and yeast share a homology of, they share a homology of only 28%. So these are the things that, so, whereas the chimpanzee are the closest relative, we share a 99.23% of sequence similarity in the, but in case of this hexokinase. And after, there's a whole uh, sequence alignment is given there for the, each permutation combination method. Uh, all the sequences are combinated and the result is given there. If you simply scroll down, you are going to, these are the gaps. See, these are the gaps. Now, as I mentioned, the mouse gene is much more, right? The mouse gene is, uh, the mouse uh, hexagon is much longer. So that means this is there and these are the gaps that is present in human. Now, since these gaps are, how can you analyze that? Whether this is a, in, uh, whether it's a deletion or a mutation, whether it's a deletion or an addition, how can you say? If it's a deletion or an addition, it's easier because see in most of the cases, in most of the cases, there is no sequence present. That means this particular sequence starting from there, it has been added. This particular thing has been added to this particular mouse. So it had an additional mutation, right? For the deletion mutation. So like this, it, uh, it, will, it is going to show you all the things it's going to align the sequence. I'm going to show you the differences, the minute differences. And uh, this what shows. And uh, this star means these are conserved domains. This, wherever you find star, stars means conserved. If you simply check that all of them has that particular valium present at that particular location. So that particular valium is highly conserved. That is highly conserved among various species, right? It's highly conserved. And like this, the whole sequence has been uh, uh, aligned. And uh, this is the very good thing that you can actually use to visualize the uh, align the sequences. And sometimes we need this alignment because uh, you need to perform this alignment beforehand if you want to move to the homology modeling because you need to provide a particular uh, very good aligned template. And uh, I tell, unless you align yourself, it's, it will be really difficult to provide the templates right uh, right where because we have to cross check. Uh, so, so that will be all. That will be the overall uh, thing that I can uh, really teach you in these two days uh, with this uh, short time. But I think uh, it's going to help you. Because uh, at least you uh, you know this uh, that uh, uh, this can be actually utilized. Uh, you can use these things and uh, hover around all these servers and uh, uh, increase your exp expertise. Uh, so that will be all. I will hand it over to uh, Kishore sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that yes. would be a very deep and informative uh, session where the students yes. and other uh, faculties and friends have learned a lot. So some of the questions we have for you. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, the first question is, sir, please, can you explain blind docking with Autodoc yes. 4.2? Yes, uh, blind docking means you, when you don't have any information regarding to the binding site of your, either your ligand or your uh, target, then you go for blind docking. It means the molecule does not have any predefined area where they should sit. It does not, I have not marked any area where they should sit. I have only allowed the molecule to hover around the whole protein surface and to find the best seat where it can bind to. It's like a musical chair with no competitor. You have a lot of seat, you have a lot of chairs where you can bind to. I am allowing you to examine each of the seats and you, if you find the most comfortable position, the best position where you can sit, where you can simply fit into, you are going to fit into that. That's the blind docking. Whereas the constant docking, I'm going to assign you a seat, right? That generally happens in examination. You simply move in and there are roll numbers written on the table because you know that's your seat. You have to sit only there. You cannot hover around the whole, uh, whole examination hall and that's the constant docking. Thank you, sir. Uh, the yeah. next question we have, 
if a protein has multiple binding sites then how to predict its affinity higher or lower is there any tool for that yeah the affinity the affinity is generally given by the thermodynamic parameters now whenever you run the amper program or and all uh, generally whenever you are even if you are using the virtual spinning with the mmpbs and gbsa the mmpbs is actually and gbsa is actually there to calculate the thermodynamic parameters okay they itself calculate the thermodynamic parameters and give you the result and uh, if it has multiple sites then it will give you the result for all of those different sites and uh, even with amber you can calculate the thermodynamic parameter and you know the uh, binding uh, affinity and the the, uh, the site where you get the lowest delta g uh, value you are know you are going to know that that the thing the why it's uh, binding spontaneously and along with it you are also going to get the k so you can simply take a look at those and you can simply judge yourself which is the um, which place would be the better uh, higher higher affinity um, proof where the particular ligand will lie apart from that there are also other experiments like uh, itc that you can do after you get your uh, um, structure uh, to get the accurate uh, ad values hello hello yes uh, thank you so much sir the next question yes. we have just um, we have a protein fasta sequence and we want to find another homologous protein for it mm, how can mm, we do for that okay first when you have a protein fasta sequence you have, you have to characterize the protein that uh, what kind of protein is that what protein is that from where and you have to narrow down your search and uh, for example suppose you are working with enzyme and you came across an enzyme so that means you know that your protein might be an enzyme so what type of biochemical reaction is it performing is it a glucose clearing enzyme or it's a what type of what it is it doing and then if it's a protease suppose you found a new protein it's a protease now there is a whole database of serine protease cysteine protease and all so you have to select uh, you have to take a look at all the serine protease uh, protease and cysteine protease and gradually you have to narrow down your search to find out this uh, this protein belongs to which protease group if it belongs to the cysteine protease group now you take all the proteins from the cysteine protease group whose structure has been solved align them and you can find the homologous protein and sometimes a literature survey will do sometimes a literature survey literature survey itself tells you that uh, what kind of protein if that particular protein has been uh, previously discovered or not and if it is not discovered then you have to do your own work and uh, uh, search from the whole group of the uh, protease just to narrow down your search and uh, find the particular homologous protein so with this thank you so much sir we wish you all yeah. the best for your future and uh, you. now uh, over to you kishor sir dr kishor sir dr kishor sir you are not audible So I think uh, Kishor, ah uh, yes, sir. Kishor sir is here. Yes, sir. The voice is not coming. Sir, your voice is not audible. I think uh, Arpit here. Uh, some questions are also there in Q and A section. Have you covered all these questions? Currently, again, we got a question, but at that time, all the questions were completed. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes.
so i think dr kishor sir is coming uh, because he is reconnecting uh, there are some network issues so uh, very nice uh, nicely covered this whole uh, training session by dr nilanjan and uh, we must uh, thank you to dr nilanjan sir and also the whole entire team of uh, shram biotechnologies private limited at uh, kolkata we are highly obliged and uh, uh our sincere gratitude towards uh, your all association with us always you have some uh, especially dr konal vora the ceo of the from biotech uh, biotechnologies private limited in kolkata whenever we uh, in it uh, dr uh, mr konal vora always stand with us to help us in many ways so uh, i think dr nilanjan has uh, given very uh, very nice insight in in particular this training session related with the Uh, molecular docking and uh, molecular docking and uh, drug designing and uh, i think uh, all the participants have uh, benefited and uh, they definitely they will uh, they will uh, conduct their training or their research activities with the help of this uh, uh, workshop session and uh, i also request all the participants uh, that if you uh, if you are in need related with this particular uh, drug designing or molecular docking related uh, uh, work uh, you can contact us or we will provide you all email id to you so that you can contact with dr nilanjan and dr kishor sendesar in the future so overall uh, i think this program is uh, nicely covered by our all the eminent speakers and industry experts and uh, my entire team always uh, always active to to uh, to um, to make it this particular program or to the entire refresher course successful so we are doing very hard task and very hard work so that uh, all the participants uh, will get maximum ben benefits from this particular uh, e refresher course so uh, thank you very much and uh, thank you dr nilanjan sir once again for joining thank us and thank you we'll have very uh, we are we are having very strong association So definitely we will reconnect with you very soon and sure, uh, hello dr dr sende sir is here so now i would like to give mic to dr kishor sende sir can you hear yes sir your voice is coming sir now you okay, thank you sir can you hear me now yeah yeah you are audible okay okay thank you sir and uh, uh, uh today's session it was a nice uh, it was my first lecture and uh, uh, i just uh, talk on the basics so that is of uh, molecular modeling that part and what are the mathematical areas that can be explored in that and some of the topics uh, that is the pro, uh, I mean some opportunities uh, and uh, the points that can be explored in the uh, finding uh, that's a virus covid-19 uh, virus uh, related to that and it was a uh, second lecture that uh, dr nilanjan banerji uh, explored very well the uh, virtual screening work so yes covered the topics and is a second part Uh, yesterday it was very nice and today is uh, very valuable even i also got uh, <coughs> uh, some of the knowledge uh, my i raised my that it is my knowledge also uh, many of the new topics and many of the software uh, that come into my mind uh, that is added to my knowledge also and he is uh, very well virtual screening workflow and mti open source uh, screen that is structure based virtual screening mt auto dock docking or mt open screen so that's a uh, user friendly uh, interface he has explained and uh, step by step and uh, with very well uh, with all that uh, flow chart in mind so that can be how it can be followed and very well explained the uh, each and uh, every uh, that one some merits and demerits behind it, each of the actions and how we can and uh, how they can proceed for uh, that virtual screening then even molecular dynamic simulation and time scale moment of particle has shown very well uh, to explain that uh, how the molecular dynamic simulation is carried out and uh, how the molecules moment that uh, with the time scale is explained that molecular dynamic uh, sorry homology modeling has explained by robeta so there are number of softwares but he has evaluated many of the numbers and he has selected a good one and best and slowly uh, explain the library uh, the structural alignment then uh by evaluation of uh, structure generated and multiple sequence alignment is carried out uh, very well and uh, the, the all the participants will be benefited uh, has benefited and uh, raised how they can proceed for homology modeling since from 
all the techniques that are in the bioinformatics uh, that can be used for whether the target uh, finding, target uh, preparation, ligand preparation, molecular modeling, docking, all the techniques has explained very well. Uh, it was uh, nice, but uh, all the participants, they can, uh, uh, for future, they need to practice on uh, many of these uh, software. They need to understand the software. Uh, uh for their uh, they need to have hands uh, uh, or extra or uh, extensive practicing all these softwares uh, will be required for them and uh, i express my thanks to dr uh, nilanjan banerji for a very nice lecture he has explained it thank you thank you very much thank you very much uh, dr kishore sende sir uh, and uh, I'm very much uh, sincerely obliged to you that uh, you have uh, uh, taken uh, the uh, opportunity or taken us uh, taken us the uh, invitation we have sent to you regarding convening this particular uh, workshop and giving us the opportunity to to uh, host uh, you as a convener. And uh, I also thankful once again thankful to Dr. Nilanjan sir. And now we are going towards uh, closing this particular workshop and. Uh, uh, I request my whole team, uh, their engineer Akrit Srivastava, Vivek Srivastava, Vivek Agnihotri is there, Shreyans and uh, Saurabh Singh. These all are doing very hard work to complete this workshop. And uh, once again, and I must thankful uh, to all the participants who are here to attend, attend this particular workshop. And uh, I just uh, want to uh, want to disclose here that uh, we will have a uh, uh, another lecture with the uh, with uh, on IPR that is left on last Saturday uh, because due to some network problem uh, problem from our speaker side, uh, Dr. Sachin Pandey will be there and he is going to deliver a complete insight in the how how can we get patent. So Dr. Sachin Pandey will be there on Saturday. So we will send the same link on uh, on Friday evening. So that you can attend this particular lecture on Saturday on IPR and patenting procedure. So thank you very much. And uh, also we are organizing a very, uh, uh, very good or very nice program with the help of Merck High and Skill Development Center that is situated in uh, MTech Chandigarh. So they are uh, our collaborator, and now they are conducting a complete workshop on uh, basics of molecular biology. So that workshop is very nice because uh, they will cover both things in a virtual manner. How can we uh, we can do uh, the uh, and we can learn uh, advances in the field of molecular biology aspects. So please attend that workshop, uh, workshop, and also advertise that workshop to to all the all your known so that maximum participation can be there. So thank you once again, everyone, especially Dr. Kishore Sende sir and Dr. Nilanjan, who, who those are here. So thank you very much. Now we are I'm requesting to stop <coughs> you, the broadcasting of this session. Yes, sir. Okay, now we can stop uh, to broadcast and stop the recording. Okay. Thank you very much.